on here okay back with another live stream uh, it's gonna be on the net pro max that I'm setting up to be my new web server and uh, trying to get DNS name server up and running uh, online <coughs> and uh, let me check my check my stream make sure everything's good over there okay that's good <coughs> all right um, let's just get on the desktop and um, let's see. Well, there's my stream again. Let's see. All right, let's go to the uh, to the machine. <clears throat> yeah, I think I remember just what yesterday day before when I was uh, there. It is. It's on my. So we can log in there. Wait, no, I don't remember that part. Okay, <clears throat> so it's up and running. Uh, my my local host name is Bishop Codot Local Domain. Uh, <clears throat> now I don't remember if I have that in any of my setup files. That's something I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about it. I've been dra I've been eating, sleeping, and then dreaming this stuff. Uh, thinking about it as I wake, go to sleep, and as I get, get up, and then I watch videos uh, all day <laughs> uh and went and went back through trying to try to get you know in my head how to do things made lots of screenshots and then moved them into one folder so i could go through them and follow them if necessary i'm gonna follow some <clears throat> and there's things i want to check and may have to set up some more stuff and i did oh i figured out one thing on my uh, godaddy uh setup um i guess i'll go there right now Oh yeah, I need. Let's see. Well, I need to go to my router first. I need to point. Let's see. Let's run the. Uh, let's go to the terminal in here, and we'll run the. Right now, my backup server is online. Right. Okay. Remember that command. Okay. Now, Bishop Code Biz is my domain that I'm working with right now. Now, <clears throat> that comes up to be. Uh, I, kind of, I pretty well recognize that as being my uh, my external IP. So let's go to my router because I'm going to end up changing the forwarding in my router. I have to do that so that the net X can be online. I don't know if I have to do it right now. Maybe I'll wait. I don't want my web server to be offline any longer than it has to be. And it could be uh, – like to eat just tonight it could be a couple hours before i get tired and quit probably i mean i don't know if i get through that'll be great but so right now um i've got it going to one uh zero dot one fifty four Th uh, that's the one out in the garage the gateway five hundred that's my it's online right now uh and the uh the ssh uh it, you know looks or SSL, whatever, whatever you call it for HD. SSH is what I use for FTPS. Anyway, the uh, secure website uh, is just unticked so that it's not even being used right now because uh, that machine out there doesn't even have that installed, I don't think. And so uh, then on, you have to have two. You have to have port forwarding, you have, uh, virtual server, and port forwarding. It's weird how that is. This one that you'd hardly even notice. That's where you're at, and this is where you would be going when you click on it. And so, uh, so it's going to. So 154 is online at 153. The one that that's my Net Pro Max. And that's the one I'm working on. So, um, oh, and my um, external IP. I want to make sure I always know what the, what it is I'm working with here. Yeah, there's my uh, IP address <clears throat> that I get from my ISP, and there's the DNS servers. There's a good example of what a you know DNS server. There's they have a primary and a secondary. Uh, so if this one didn't answer, then this then it would query that one. <coughs> so um, that's what I'm trying to set up. Only I'm going to only be able to have. I was thinking of DNS one and two, but I'm only going to be able to have one because I only have one server, right? That's doing that has DNS. So 
if I may, I could probably put in their DNS too, and but it would just be the same server again. So if it's down, it's down. It'd be, it'd be silly, I guess. So uh, let's go back to port forwarding and just leave it there until I get ready to do it. Or well, it'll it'll log out. I guess so. I might as well. I'll just leave it there and let's let's just go to let's go to my website. <coughs> I'll just go to well let's go to dot biz that's one we're working with see it's up and it's going and let's do dot com now bishopco.com is still on the uh, forwarding to bishopco.us.2 and the whole thing is I want them to all be have their own DNS server for each website and it's gonna be bishopco.com and bishopco.biz they're both gonna be the same website but I want them to have their own it's kind of funky looking own uh, name servers so um, <clears throat> yeah now let's do bishopco.com now see it's a little more involved <clears throat> because see I have my IP address uh, oh yeah I was talking about GoDaddy well let's just kind of look through this and then I'll go back into GoDaddy uh, so, but you see, they both end up at the same place, though, which is my router. And that port 53, okay, if that port 53 uh, comes up, then I guess it is talking to the web. I was worried that I wasn't even talking to the web, and I just thought I was on my, <coughs> now wait a minute. Well, yeah, the, the Net Pro Max is running, but, oh, I've got, okay, let's go. Oh, it, yeah, it doesn't matter what my, okay, so my router, it's the same router, which no matter which machine is doing the serving, okay. I just don't know why port 50, uh, port 53 is for the name server, and it shows it like it's there, from what I understand from these results, you know, what's, what comes back. Uh, an address 241, 51. These other IPs, I'm not quite sure what they represent. I think it's part of uh, the daisy chain of getting there in the end. Actually, this one, <clears throat> none of these are uh, my external IP. Let's see. Oh, this, this, whoa, that's not what I want. This browser page doesn't... Uh, open up a find like that <laughs> that's what I wanted Let's see if it'll stay there yeah it doesn't there it goes okay okay so the uh, first one shows my external IP address but that's the only place it shows my when I do bishopco.com it doesn't come up hmm yeah the more I use this the more I get turned around uh, if I just go to the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you have to learn learn how to interpret what you get back when you're in these commands. I figured, I found that out already. <coughs> so uh, you really do have to. I, I mean, I've re I've seen videos and read over how they, you know, the DNS, the domain name system works and how just going to, to the internet to a website works uh, um, recently and but get it you know it come it comes and goes in bits and pieces in my head so anyway um, you get, you've got I think it is three main well, there's four there anyway it, it can go through the, well all these different IPs one two three four see that's different uh, parts of the system it's going through to, to get there to get the answer uh, like it says I don't know where it is but this one does I don't know where it is but this one does and finally it gets there but it does get there <clears throat> it doesn't have an error saying it can't be found and uh, of course when I did Bishop code out biz it shows that and the reason is I know this much uh, I'll show it so that it makes sense I think I'll probably have to uh, Go ahead and use the monitor so it's blurry. I mean, you know, use the uh, camera at the monitor so that it's blurry because I don't want to show all my. I'm always worried that I'm going to show 
information that could cause me damage, you know. So, uh, <coughs> so I'll try to limit what I show and um, so let's see I'm going to look at first I'm going to look at my bishopco.com I want to see what it's set up to go to okay yeah it's doing oh huh okay it's got three A records. There we go. 24, 16, 31. 24, 15, 31, 6. Okay, I'm just looking at the last numbers. I was wondering if that's... <clears throat> okay, but that should be like, if this one doesn't answer, this one will. And this one doesn't answer, this one will. Like that. So, it sure looks like my uh, thing is behind. But anyway... And then, oh, there's let's see, one, two, three, four. And then there's another one that says part. So, uh, huh. That's different than uh, Bishop Code Biz is now. But it's still, I'm still using the default name servers for GoDaddy, namecontrol.com. That's just, everybody would know that if you had a GoDaddy account. So, uh, <coughs> <coughs> and um, it's forward to you, Bishop Coda US dot two. And um, that's how it is. And so, what I realized, and what I was trying to say is, when you use the forwarding, it automatically, well, Bishop Coda US dot two, the, the free DNS dot org, it sends out their. The IP address to GoDaddy when I used the forwarding. When I forward it to whatever I forwarded it to, so I could forward it to my name server. It would be simple as far as just setting it up. I could just forward it to my name server once I know it's up and running. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, because what I had done, let me go to my... Uh, Let's go ahead and go here. It seems like I'm so behind. I'm going to go back to the desktop and see if it'll make it pick up the camera, catch up, and work better. So here we are, my, you know, my uh, NS lookups. And uh, <clears throat> then I'll go back to the camera and go to GoDaddy. See if it gets any more back, you know, less behind. So my NS lookups, and then, uh, so the, the one I was just going over, May not turn out as bad in the actual. Re it won't turn out as bad in the resulting video. I know that. But, so. <clears throat> I got to remember. I keep forgetting how much behind my. Uh, I think maybe my preview, my live preview, could be a lot more behind at one time than another, than what I'm actually broadcasting. You know, so there can be caching going on to make sure it works well. So, yeah, I need to quit worrying about that so much. I guess because I talk about it in my videos and I. I see the spots where I talked about it, and it's not near that bad. It's like I really didn't need to say anything. Okay. <clears throat> but it looks like it's just terrible. <clears throat> now, it is better, though, now than it was a while ago. So I think it did help. So what I have is I manually put in on the A, and there's just one A record. There's two in there, one for my subdomain, I was, and, one for, and I manually put in my public IP address. Because when I took out the forwarding the other day, <clears throat> that made it say parked. So something had to be in there. And so I put that in there. And that's, that's why I figured out, you know, uh, after thinking about it all, and that's what got me thinking about the forwarding. It might be easier because then going in here to the name servers, and you can say change, and then it'll let you change them. Actually, I can do it right now change choose what you want to do and it's on default say custom is your only other choice and it tells you all this stuff about i uh, read it out yesterday in the video you know well wires is the best in the world basically but but if you really ought to do it then here's some templates for weebly wix and squarespace but down below that you can put your own in there so you enter the server name and you enter your uh, name server <coughs> let's see
Let's see, how would I do it? I haven't done it. Well, I'm not sure what it is. I could do it and see what happens. Maybe what I want to do. So, server name, it might, it's probably be NS. I haven't, well, I, if I've got one, you know, named, it was automatic when I, I did it and didn't, don't remember it in my setup. I think I may have not have done that part. So, uh, <clears throat> and, oh, server name, server name. So there's just two places. There can be, you know, NS1, NS2, or whatever, you know, two choices. So I only have one, so I would just do one. Okay. So cancel that. Now, yeah, I'm going to leave that right there. And, uh, even if I showed that up, you know, up close and personal, that wouldn't show anything damaging to me. Some of the other stuff, uh, I'm a little more concerned about showing. <clears throat> so, uh, back on the uh, <coughs> terminal. Now, <coughs> uh, there's other commands and stuff <coughs> that I want to run. Uh, well, I want to make sure everything seems okay on here first. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. One fifty three one nine two to one. Now that's the local uh, IP address. Can't find it. Now I saw two things about this. <clears throat> I kept thinking, okay, you see, my my uh, GoDaddy's pointing. This is what I'm trying to get at. But GoDaddy is pointing to um, what I'm getting in results up there when I did NS lookup on my domain name. Yeah, that works because GoDaddy is my name server, <clears throat> so it's pointing to whatever. Either I forward it in in the you know one case or it, the other case, it's going straight. Bishop code .biz is going straight to my local IP because I did that manually the other, yesterday or the day before, whenever it was. And so my backup, see, I haven't switched it. I'm still going to the backup server. To the to Internet, it's still going to the backup server out in the garage. So, but I also saw something in one of those videos I was watching. But I've been doing, I've noticed that, I remember that. Actually, I thought when I first set it up, it said it was good when I did NS look up the IP address. But now it says can't find it. Now, I saw something that tells you this could this is a problem you can have on, on a video I was watching so let's look at this video uh, video screenshot and I'll try to remember it and go through here <coughs> okay um, the ETC resolve config file <coughs> okay and I also let me see I may have a well, I'll just try to follow these commands. There's a different way. I actually got a Midnight Commander, the twin panel file manager that runs in the command line and the terminal window. Got it installed yesterday uh, on the server. After I quit making videos, I installed it and played around with it. And so I can use that now if I want. But I may not need it. Okay, let, let's see. This file is managed by the main system resolve 8. Do not edit. Okay. Yeah, this is what he said. This is a dynamic resolve config file for connecting local clients to the internal DNS stub resolver of system D resolve. This file lists all configured search domains. Run system D resolve status to see details about the uh, uplink DNS servers currently in use. Okay. Third party programs must now access this file directly, but only through the uh, sim link at the etc resolve config so, you know, like some of them like this guy they usually call them conamp but I've always called it config because I knew they were config files I did it since Windows 3.1 so that's still what I call it and when you'd read about it they back in those days they would say go to the config file <coughs> and you just knew that a conf dot conf would mean it was a config file so you manage uh, and so when I went over to Linux, that's still the way I think of it. So anyway, to manage main resolve config 5 uh, in, a, in a different way, replace this sim link by a static file or a uh, different sim link. See man system D resolve service 8 for details about the supported modes of operation for ETC resolve config. Okay, now what he did.
did down here. He see, okay, he went into particular directory, etc, DH, DHCP, list, DC client config. And I see DC client config, not resolve config. Uh, DC client config, XXD. Oh, that's all the files. And uh, DCB, D, con, D, HCPD config. Debug. <clears throat> Let's see. This is the results of his command, I think. Yeah. DC client, uh, enter hooks. And then, so then he goes, uh, These guys are so, they move so fast. I barely catch what you know a screenshot. I have to go back and forth. K E C D D H C P D. And then he's got. <coughs> uh, I'm wondering why there's a number sign at the end of that. <coughs> Let's go to the next one and see. Okay, but yeah, he. I don't see how he. I, I don't know. E E T C D H C P D. I wonder if I missed the rest of the command what file he was wanting to open up because see now there's his file opened up in the yeah dc etc dhcptd so that's the file oh but it's dh no that's the folder the file is dhc client config yeah that's a different file okay so this is the one you can edit that's the whole point he was getting at and uh I'm gonna read every line on here again. <clears throat> that was just trying. I was just really, you know, trying to get to where I uh, could remember what the heck's going on. Okay, the, where he has his cursor there, his highlight. That is where he's gonna work. And see, that was already in there. The uh, they call I forgot they call that the loopback IP address. That's always in every Windows or Linux machine. That's the local local host address. Okay, so. Now I think on the next one, he's just still talking about what he's going to do. Okay, now he goes in there and he edits it, starts to edit it. And uh, what does he do? Okay, so it says prepend domain name server 127. Okay, now all he does is go in there and he took that out. Oh, he, uh, he, okay, it's commented out. That line is commented out. That's the whole thing. That's why his cursor is over that. He was saying that's commented out. You need to uh, take the comment out so that that line becomes active. But then I believe you edit it as well. Yeah, it's a one. Okay, zero, 127.0.0.1. Zero And then he changes it to 11. And I believe he, uh, there's something they keep talking about that I quite don't understand because it seems that they're, they go back and forth between talking. But see, there's two ways to set them up. You can just set up a DNS server, name server for local hosts to attach, to connect to, or you can set one up that works on the Internet. Well, I'm trying to set one up that works on the Internet. This seems to me... Uh, he says 11. Now, I believe that means he allows w 11 hosts to connect, or basically 1 through 11, on that Oh, you s on that IP address. See that it's different now. I just realized he did change it. He took out the, lo the loopback. He put in his IP address. Okay. I think that's... I don't know if it's the IP address of this machine. Oh, this is the server. Apparently, he's working sometimes in the server... Sometimes he's working on another machine he calls desktop, or at least one of the guys was. I think it's him. Yeah, it's him. I've got at least four videos I've done screenshots of, uh, too. <laughs> so, or four different, well, more four or five videos than three or four guys. I'm confused. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so he does that. And you put that semicolon at the end. you got to do that. That timeout is, th that was already there, uh, I think, uncommented. Yeah, that timeout, 300 milliseconds, I imagine. Could be 300 minutes, but I think it's milliseconds. Yeah, it would be milliseconds. It wouldn't make sense to be longer than that. Okay, so that's his IP, <clears throat> I imagine, of that server. So that would be what I'd put in there. Okay, so then he does this restart, system CTL restart. And then, uh, and he also... 
he restarts networking he restarts network manager and then this is let's see, that's a whole nother video okay and he's done that's supposed to fix the pro now the problem I forgot to say the problem he's trying to fix let's go back because I'll probably if I if I end up needing to do this I want to get the first screenshot and follow the commands <coughs> See, that's not the first screenshot of this little section. Okay, now, oh, that messed me up. You got to match. I hit escape. You got to hit that to get out of that. Okay, so um, <coughs> I'm going to look at that file first. I think I need to just go through all of my configuration files. But <coughs> we'll see. <coughs> okay, um, first I'd just like to see, I mean, I want to go... Fix it. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. You know, I want to kind of see if it's online, if it's going to work online or not. So <coughs> I'll probably point my GoDaddy setup to it first and then see. Well, I don't know. <coughs> okay. Uh, I guess I'll, I'm taking it as a go because I can't plan it out of my head that well. Um, screenshots are kind of my guide. Okay. Um, to try and follow what I've been learning trying to learn now um i might want to use that file manager and see what files i have in my system i tried to only look at videos that were well i think he was on there was some that were sent os which is based on red hat and red hat is what fedora is based on so they're most things are the same, but, well, I, I messed around with CentOS, and I tried to use it as my server, but it was enough different than Fedora, and where directories are, where things are put in certain directories was enough different, and and actually, it didn't have any, back in those, that was years ago, and, and there was a lot of GUIs for setting things up for servers and everything, and you just, they weren't available in CentOS, so I just didn't want to mess around with the command line, because I knew I could, in, in Fedora, I could set, do most everything in GUI. And I did a turn on my Fedora 14 system, and I knew I had a, a server admin a GUI up in there, and it was uh, it was just for Apache for HTTP HTTPD for Apache web server. It wasn't for a uh, name server. And so, and <clears throat> of course Fedora 14's uh in you know in life for a long time, so there's no uh, repositories are no longer active there are back and so I can't I can't actually install or uninstall anything on that system anymore there are uh, archive repositories that I could set up you know I, I could change all my see what's wrong is my um, my repos are wrong they're not there anymore so I, I've been I keep thinking one day I'm gonna point, get in there and figure out how to point every one of those repos to uh, you know the this the, uh, the archive repositories and then it would work again I'm pretty sure but that's pretty complicated too. It's kind of like doing this. So I've always had trouble with that. <clears throat> so <coughs> I've never done it. I just use the apps that I've got over 3,500 apps on that machine. <laughs> Sometimes I did want to take some, I kind of wanted to take a few things off to make it that were running in the background that I didn't realize I really didn't need that. I, I used it to try things out all the time. <coughs> but anyway. Let's go back to where we were again. Um, yeah, let's see if we can figure that out. <clears throat> okay, but what I'm thinking is, what is the name of the file? Okay. Well, the whole point is, he was saying in this video, it's not a very, this one's not long. It's only 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Uh, the other videos are, <clears throat> you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever of these these people make of course then they're they're just said and they're fast they know what they're doing of course they go so fast i can i can't hardly follow them without stopping and taking screenshots but um <clears throat> anyway what he was saying is uh when you reboot the system and you get what i get here what i get there here there everywhere uh can be seen you know it's not being seen <clears throat> when i say ns look up what, what was the first one? Bishop code up is. Oh, the first time I ran it. When I or the last time. Okay, when I ran it on the IP address, making sure I'm going to this machine, it says can't find it. He says the reason that happens <clears throat> is because uh, your 
your system is automatically changing your IP address. Uh, and that brings back another thing. I did not set a static IP in the Net Pro Max uh, because, uh, you know, when I was following those instructions, I didn't set that because I knew my router would do that. Well, it may be a mistake. Uh, that could call, maybe cause this too, I'm thinking. But anyway, he said, uh, I think maybe right here where it says name server, that might be the IP he was talking about in the video. Let's see. Because I think, yeah, I think the uh, that's the problem. See, this is his IP that he wants the name server to be. And when he ran that check, he come up with this IP address right here, and it's on 127 too. So yeah, first I want to. That's what I need to do. Cat etc resolve config. I'll run that <clears throat> and see what I get. Cat, uh, somebody, you know, like especially when you're watching videos of people from other countries. He speaks English, but. You know, he's got a real thick accent, so he's he's hard to understand. Better than the other, the one guy that that's, that's a, like a, he's actually working for a school or something. He's Indian. This guy is Hispanic. I don't, you know, he could be from Mexico. He's probably, well, I don't know where he is. You know, he could be in Texas. He could be right here 10, 20 miles from me, or he could be down in Mexico, you know. He's good. He's smart. Uh, he's fa he's one of the fastest <laughs> moving guys I've seen. He was one of the he was easier to follow because I got to understand him better. He's hard to understand for me, but easier than the Indian guy. I'm talking about from India. People in America think of Indians as uh, Native Americans as Indians still, uh, but uh, <clears throat> Indian guy from India. You could tell. You know, I mean, those that's a pretty distinct accent, so I could tell where he was from, even though I don't think I ever saw him. Uh, anyway, going in circles like crazy. I guess I've already warmed myself out today. Okay, so um, oh, I think etc dhcp d number sign space ls. Oh, that's list. Yeah, list. Uh, what's in that directory? Okay. I'm kind of afraid I didn't get the whole command, <clears throat> but I might be able to figure it out by what file he opened up. And actually, I can use, yeah, I can use that midnight commander. That might help me a lot. Because if I'm going to have to type out these commands, since yeah, what I've been doing is copying and pasting them from instructional pages, that's okay. But having to cop, type them out, I make so many mistakes. And if I don't have it right here in front of me, because it would be pretty tricky to have this up and big enough for me to read it and then be able to but I got to be over here to type. See, so you ca I could put them on the same, you know, I could resize the window, blah, 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 but get, but getting it all to where I could see it. That, you can see that would be a problem. So, but if I'm going to run that command, cat etc resolve config, let me go ahead and open up midnight commander first because you can actually switch back and forth between it. And the, and the reason I couldn't, I was trying to, in, you're writing, you know, typing out Midnight Commander. Well, you just do DNF install MC. And if you want to run it, you just type MC. <clears throat> okay, now see, you have a little terminal window down there. But I think it's really only for uh, going through the directories. So, but I'm going to do that. And in this one, now I'm used to Midnight Commander responding to the mouse. But this version that I got, it, I read, I went to their website and read up on it. This version only works in a keyboard, so you have to learn. Actually, I found a real good article on how to use it. And uh, I guess I'll, what did I just do? Hit control. That took me out of it. Don't be darn. Went back to the, and we closed it all together, but I didn't want to close it. But uh, <clears throat> what I was trying to do was, was, whoops, well, that part's okay. What I was trying to do, I hit control O. Control Shift O. <laughs> that must have been a shortcut for Midnight Commander. Crazy. Software and that thing has got when you've got a extra space, it changes the order it goes in when you organize stuff. By there and that one's wrong. Midnight Commander. <laughs> I did that one wrong. Okay, so what I was looking for is yeah, there we go. Okay, 
this right here, I want to try to show the where the resources are that I'm using. And I'm, I'm, I'll, I can't, the way the YouTube thing works, it's really, really hard to put all them. I've got so many links, it's really hard to put them all in there and make them look right and be readable. It takes forever in the description. So I have a blog in it, Don's, uh, Don's Deals blog. Um, it's always at the beginning of my uh, videos in the end this blog here i'll try to put it on here and so what i can do is like i did with that video i can just post a, a blog post of the video and then i can put the links right below that one i didn't put in but I've, i used to blog all the time almost every day <clears throat> i don't do it as much anymore because i got more into making videos but sometimes it's good to work work them together so uh, how to use midnight commander and uh it's really good it's it's quick and detailed and it gives you commands and domain or you bet to send os which uh if you didn't know that send os like well like i said a while ago was made by red hat and, or is a it's not made by red hat i'm sorry it is a kind of a it's a derivative of red hat or a remix of red hat and uh if i remember right let's see yeah and uh, Red Hat is who, and Fedora is a remix of Red Hat, or a, well, of course, Fedora, Red Hat actually makes Fedora. Anyway, it's a little bit older, obviously, it says Yum. So, anyway, I just did DNF. Actually, I think I put Yum install and it didn't work. So, maybe Fedora 28 doesn't forward uh, Yum commands to DNF anymore. But so then I put DNF, if I remember right, that's what happened. I put DNF install MC and went right there and installed it. So the first things you need to know is the keyboard shortcuts and stuff or the way to move around it. And I think I'll probably be able to remember them enough. I guess I'll leave this open in case I get stuck. But uh, in case I have to go back here. So uh, <clears throat> let's go back into MC. Okay, warning. My commander is already running on this terminal. Oh, okay. quit okay oh well how do i get back into it then <laughs> okay so i need the commands i've somehow minimized it but see it's not showing in there anymore okay so um oh you can change the colors uh let's see Trying to find more. I remember that I was reading that about how to make it <clears throat> bigger and smaller. Um, yeah, just type MC, change the color. I like the color as it is. It'll run in Windows. T uh, yeah, I think it'll actually run in Windows too. Like a Windows, you could run it in a Windows terminal. Yeah, at first I couldn't use it because I, like, I just tried to start using it because I used it before for years and years. And I was like, what the heck? And I realized there's, when I, when I quickly realized the mouse didn't do anything. But then <clears throat> I was like, well, I, I thought down there at the bottom, you know, it says one, uh, help one. I thought well, I just hit one. It didn't work. I hit three. It didn't work. And I was like, what the heck? Because usually these kind of things, they tell you the basic commands right there on the screen. But this one didn't. So. Oh, no, you can't do that either. Let's see. I'm just going to have to keep looking through there. It's going to be hard to find, I'm afraid. F9, when you're in there, will bring up the, men get you into the top menu. Um, I did SSH into my, from this, from my, uh, See, I'm all, I was I was doing remote uh, terminal into Internet Pro Max, and then I SSH'd uh, into my server out in the garage, <clears throat> and uh, copy. I think I copied a file, but anyway, um, that worked good. Okay, well, that's the end of everything. Um,
Yeah, what I hit to what I normally hit when I'm in the browser to open up my bookmarks, it, that's what made it go away. I guess I could try it again. I didn't think about that. Yeah, Control Shift O. <laughs> well, what didn't you think of that to start with? Okay, so I better leave that instructional thing up in case I get hung up. Of course, I did. I just finally realized. But uh, yeah, if I'm if I need to do something, I'll just leave that up. That'll help. Okay, now, <clears throat> so I'm back into Midnight Commander tab. We'll move over, you know, back and forth. And then you can use the keyboard just like normal to go through there. Now, so this is, both sides are in this machine, but you can have one set of directories on one side and one set of directories on another. But you can also SFTP into another machine is what I did yesterday. But the server is uh, is uh, is in var www. That's where... And then in, on, on the Fedora machines, there's like another sir, another folder, HTML. And my domain machine, it's just var www, and there you are. <clears throat> you got to remember that when you're working back and forth. <clears throat> now that's my sir. Okay, now that's my where my sir. I was don't I'm going not going where I tended to go. Oh well, I'll tell you right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was I did I was been talking about doing this and I ended up doing it yesterday as I was playing around with this. Uh, and you can't type, you know, the the file names and go to them like you can in the newer file manager in the more well the graphic user interface. So I'm looking for. There it is. It's a different color, so it shows up. Net Promax JPEG. All right. Now let me go get on Bishopco.biz. Now this is a little thing that I've you know learned years ago. Okay, so images will images will show up. They don't have to have. <laughs> Did I spell it wrong? Net. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. Net Promax JPEG. Okay. <clears throat> now that file would have shown up if. The Net Pro Max was showing up on the internet. It did not show up because it does not exist on the Gateway 500, which is the one showing up on the internet. So now I can know for sure, without a doubt, which machine I'm talking to. <clears throat> so I just put that an, an image. I was thinking I was going to show it to you, but see, I wasn't thinking right. So if I go to, uh, let's see, what is it, 153? I'll just change that to a three. Oh, that went to the, didn't want to go back to, <laughs> that's already logged in, so it went straight to it. I want to go to the website. It says it's not secure. Oh, gosh, get me out of here. When you're on your own, HTTPS. Oh, well, that's, uh, right now, I'm not going to do that because I just want to go to it. I did it again. How do you get rid of all this extra crap? It's not taking what I'm typing in there. I want to go to my local. There. There we go. This is what I'm trying to do. Maybe it's on my phone. Okay. There. Net Pro Max. I've already been there. Okay. Now there's the image. Picture I took of it <clears throat> when it was running and, you know, uh, <clears throat> when it was sitting where it's sitting right now. Actually, when I first got it and I was, you know, messing with it. So, um, so that I know I'm on the Net Pro Max. So I just just put that in the uh, root directory of the folder. They call it the root directory. The root directory of any when the root directory is not the root folder in Linux. Uh, that was something that took me a while to get remember. The root directory is the the root or the I'll start to say home, but that's not really a good way to say it either. <clears throat> but the root directory is the uh, like the root directory of the file system is just a forward slash, but the root directory of my server is the one HTML folder, the one where everything is. Um, everything's at. So when they when they say the root directory, they're probably not talking about anything to do with uh, the root user. See, like over here, that's where that is. That is in the root users folder. See root. 
That's in the root users folder. But when they say the root directory, that's what they turn me around and around and around. Because when I first started learning about websites, they were talking about them on running on uh, Linux or Unix servers. And uh, <clears throat> that threw me around and around and around until I finally read something to understand that. And because I was building mine, I, when I first learned how to install uh, Apache, it was on Windows 98. So, uh, <clears throat> so my website is uh, in var www.html. W, that is the root directory of my website. Now, the root directory of this whole system is just forward slash. You can see that up there. <coughs> and uh, where I need to go, let's look back at our screenshot now that I've gone in circles. ETC, uh, okay, ETC resolve config. Let's go see if that file is there, if we can do that. Oh, I'm just, it looks kind of like uh, total... <laughs> But that won't work. I can type. I wonder if I put forward slash etc. Will it, that doesn't work either. You would think you could go there. <laughs> That'll be. Okay, etc. So use the keyboard, you're fine. <clears throat> okay. Now, what I already forgot the name of the file. Resolve config. Okay. I really miss being able to type to get to my words. See, I'm like, it's just. Takes so much longer, and I have trouble looking through a long list like that. L M O K. This one is when it gets to the bottom, it starts goes back. So this one actually has them in a weird order. Instead of having folders and then everything's in. Okay, everything is in alphabetical order up here. Folders and files. Why don't I see resolve? Now that I believe that was on CentOS. So. Maybe there's just more files in there than I expect. Either that or it's starting over and going, you know, getting to the bottom too quick. So I'll go slower. I'll, I'll, instead of holding the key down, L M N O P Q R. Yeah, you can re you can reorder things too, and I might would want to do that. Make it go more like Crusader. There, resolve config. Now, um, I want to view the file. F9 will bring get you up in the now. If you want to work in the left side and do different things, you do that. There is a quick view, but then there's file view and file view, and I think that's quick view is not to view the file. That is changes the whole layout, and your left and right, it changes like the directory structure, and it's weird, and I don't understand. It, I can't work with it. I got in there several times wanting to just view a file. File view, wherever you're at, you'll view that file commands, different things you can do. I'm just using the left and right and up and down keyboard. And then you'll use enter. <coughs> and if you want to get out of this program, you go in, in, exit twice or out of a spot that you're in. Like, oh, if you're in a file, if you're viewing a file. And uh, options, that's where you can change like the appearance and stuff. Then if you want to do something on the right menu, then you would use that one. So that's completely different than Crusader or Total Command or any of that. So yeah, don't do quick view. I keep wanting to do that still it's, okay now view file now it says do you view the file resolve config yes you can just hit enter there it is <coughs> okay there's something right there generated by network manager search bishop code us dot two bishop code local domain oh okay this file needs to be that's not going to be, uh, I don't think that'll be right for what I'm trying to do. Now, bishopcode.us.2 is my, um, yeah, if you're only going to search those two things, then you're you're not going to find my <laughs> name server that's on here, which is, well, yes, it will, because this is bishopcode.local uh, bishopcode domain. But I actually don't want to search 
bishopco.us.tv. <clears throat> I might if I kept using that. Well, the whole point is to not use that forwarding service. If I can, if I understand how this can be used, <laughs> I think I do. This machine will not only be the web server, but it will serve. It'll be the name server, the domain name server. And so when somebody on the, something on the internet, you know, somebody on the internet tries to go to bishopco.com or bishopco.biz or whatever, then this thing will answer up and say, here I am. <clears throat> and then all the other things that work together, the other, the root servers, and uh, there's one called a root, and I guess it's called a name, domain server, root domain server or something like that. They will find, I get, it may have to run for a while for them to see it, but anyway, they will see it and point them to it and I'll um, <clears throat> anyway yeah I saw them editing a file and they were putting in search so and so so and so search so and so that could be wrong I didn't do that I don't think by hand if I did I may have done it wrong well this is not done by hand this is done automatically so the other file is the one that uh, we want to uh, <coughs> edit not this one the name server, that is my router. So my name server needs to be uh, this machine right here. So the only way I could keep it now, I was wondering, do it need to be my external IP or the internal IP? Well, the only way it's going to work is if it's this internal IP of this machine because it, I'm going to set it to be always the same. I'm going to go ahead and do like they tell you to do it, and I'm going to hit escape twice and get out of there. Now that I'm still in Midnight Commander, okay, <clears throat> yeah, I can do this to edit the files. So that's probably going to be easier than trying to copy and paste. You know, well, I can't copy and paste than to try to tap out. Like, see, I can do cat. I'll try. I'll just do it to confer, to compare, and see what we get. Cat etc resolve config. Okay. Now I'm going to get out of there. How did I get out of there? Okay. It's actually pretty cool that I accidentally learned that. Let's go make sure I'm <coughs> getting it right. Cat etc R E S O L B. See it went up. Oh yeah. Let's see. Cat. ETC resolve config. Okay, that just brings out the uh, <clears throat> information. I guess he. Uh, okay, that. I need to read up again and see what does that cat command mean. What does it uh, stand for? I thought I was thinking it was a way to edit files. Is what I was thinking. So cat etc resolve config, and that tells you what's in the file. Well, there you go. Oh, that was good. But it's also not what I want. Okay. So So then he says, uh, now we know right where the file is. I know I have it just like he said. So I need to go to prepend domain name. Okay, but n wait, I don't want to go to, I don't want to do it in ETC resolve config though. I want to do it in etc dhcp dhcp okay etc dhcp all right <clears throat> so let's go over here get back into uh, oh yeah we're not commander okay <clears throat> and I'm glad I accidentally learned that command control shift o which if you're in the in any other page in the web browser besides this terminal window here it would open up my bookmarks. <clears throat> so, <laughs> how about that? I can close those bookmarks. Okay. And oddly enough, you can't screw things up with it since there's no mouse in here, then you can't screw things up. <laughs> so, I'm looking for uh, get rid of some of this extra stuff on the screen. Now, I'm looking for ETC DHCP. ETC. Don't know why I can't give up doing that. Okay. We gotta go up. We're still in ETC, but we want the file DHCP. If 
what I understand. Or the folder. It could well, no, it wouldn't be a folder. This is really laid out in a weird way. <coughs> Maybe I should go ahead and I, I, I don't like to get sidetracked into trying to set things up. Layout, configuration, panel options, display, learn, layout, vertical, horizontal, equal split, number visible. Okay. Use the tab to go, you know, to work around it. I just want to get out and cancel that. Okay, put me back in there again. F9, options. Panel options, confirmation appearance. Usually you have like view. Appearance, skin. Oh, don't care about that. <coughs> options. Virtual file system. Or virtual FS. Okay, that's the configuration. Other options. Drop down menu. Safe delete. Doesn't have safe delete on? <clears throat> What's been asking you, I think? I'm going to make sure. I don't want to accidentally delete a file. Complete show all. Auto menu. Ask new file name. Doesn't want to go back. I'm trying to get it to go there. I was trying to go left, but it wouldn't go left. Verse operation. Okay, I don't see anything that will tell me that the view is what I want. <coughs> there no I wonder if uh, well, that didn't do oh I was in a folder so yeah it did it did what it should do X uh, F10 is exit yeah instead and yeah, that was where I was wrong at down at the bottom those numbers are F1, F2, F, and, and so F10, uh, where's, yeah, last one quit, F10. <coughs> so um, it's F, not F10, not 10. So uh, maybe I should have realized that. Probably that's how come I was able to use it before without, I just forgot that. Command, compare directories. Compare directories, I think that means it could sync, do syncing. Panel options. Link select motion. Oh, links is another uh, links. That's another file, uh, lightweight file browser. It might work in the terminal too. <coughs> I'd have to try that one. Oops, tried to do a screenshot. Yeah, it worked. That <laughs> scared me. I thought I'd mess something up when everything jumped. <coughs> Skinner scrolling, mouse mouse page scrolling. Yeah, but my mouse isn't working. I think it's because it's remote. Quick search. Okay, I didn't want to change anything in there layout 
confirmation, appearance, display bits. What is display bits? I don't understand. Oh, yeah, ETF. <clears throat> well, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to change the. Uh, I want it to be folders on top and then just ABC for the default files. I'm having trouble finding things. Earn keys, virtual. What is the virtual file system settings? Oh, <clears throat> anonymous password. Always just FTP proxy. Wouldn't change any of that. <clears throat> really don't know what you do with that, but just don't worry about that. So just don't mess it up. <clears throat> I looked at layout, horizontal equal split, number of visible. Okay, one more time. Let's see. Listing mode, sort order. It's in. <laughs> so it's you got one for the left and one for the right. Filter, FTP, SMB, all of it. Okay, so what I want is just sort. Order name okay so that's okay case sensitive that's where it's bothering me right there that's bothering me I don't like it that way executable first just name that's all I want that'll probably help a whole lot and then let's look at the other thing <coughs> what was the other thing Listing mode. Let's see what that is. Full file list. Yeah, that's what I want. I don't want to have to keep clicking into folders to see everything anymore than I have to. Okay, yeah, I can tell. I believe it's already going to be better for me. Except for, I think, yeah, that it seems to move a lot faster than I can tell what's going on. And it jumps. See, when it gets to the top, it doesn't just, it just seems to jump real far. <clears throat> it's still not strictly A, B, C, D. There's still things in between the folders. All right, well, I'm going to leave it like that. I've completely forgot what it was I was looking for. Sorry. I know that bad sidetrack, I guess. Okay, DHC client config. Is that what I want? Oh, DHC client config. DHC client config. I thought that was a file he said not to edit. I guess this is the file he said to edit. <laughs> DHC client config. D e t c DHCP. That's what it says up there. Oh, well, that was the folder we were in in the first place. Okay, so you knew I was going in a wild goose chase this whole time, didn't you? So the file I want is DHC client config. DHC client config. <clears throat> and then I can start editing. So I can get to there just the same way I did a while ago. I just need to be an ETC. I thought it was DHCP client. DHC client config. I could have been in the wrong file. Let me make darn sure we get in the right file. DHC client config. It's a lot harder trying to do it off the screenshots than following a written out thing. I'll tell you that. ETC don't even see anything like that now I think because I was looking for a different file a while ago what was the 
Let's keep going. Maybe it's. No, it's all in the right order now. Okay. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't go back to the top when you get to the end. There's just a lot of stuff in here, but it does. See, it looks okay. There's just that many directories in there. I kept thinking it was starting over. D C Compact. I think I might have been in there. No. Okay, let me get back and see why I'm lost. Well, <clears throat> okay, now when I opened it up, I've lost what I had in my terminal. Bash command not found. Somehow I'd accidentally. Okay, root bishop co uh, etc. That's where I'm at. <coughs> um. Yeah, see, he's using nano, DHC, or DH client. Yeah, DH client config. So the whole time, he was just getting me into, oh, resolve config. I was looking at resolve config. Okay. But what he opened up to edit was... Now maybe that's because, it, like I said, CentOS is, uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Sent, he opened up DH client config and edited. That's what he edits, DH client config. Okay. But it could be that in Fedora, I can edit the uh, other file. Let's go looking again. I think maybe I just can't find it. DH. DHC. Liant. <laughs> I always have to do three letters, I guess, instead of just two. DH. Client. Config. DH. Client. Config. Sometimes I wish I could just type it out and find it in here. Well, actually, I do. I said that a while back. DH. Those ones with the squiggly lines usually mean temporary files. They're not anything about. I mean, I don't want to. Of course, I don't want that. But I was just A B C D, and we should be. Am I in the wrong folder? Yeah, he went to E T C D H C P. Okay, etc dhcp. So that's why I can't find it. <clears throat> there, dhcp. There's only one file in there. Dhcp. DH client, DH client, <coughs> mine is DH client, uh, DH client config, I think is what he's in. DH, yeah, D, DH client config, but I have DH client D dot D, which is, yeah, see, there are differences between CentOS and Fedora. That's <coughs> actually until uh, today when I really needed more information, uh, I didn't watch any of those videos on uh, that had anything to do with CentOS. They said CentOS, unless, uh, well, I didn't. So anyway, um, 
want to make sure it's the right file. Well, I'll look at it and see. If it looks like that other file, <clears throat> then it should be all right. But I didn't know it was going to be this hard to f find my spots here doing this this way. DH client config. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he went to CD, ETC, DHCP, ETC, DHCP list, and then he went to DH client config, and then there's some other ones. Exit hooks DC here. They have a lot in his. Uh, pretty sure he was in CentOS too. I, I can't. I'd have to go back and look to make sure. But uh, you want it to. It's going to end up in Resolve Config, but this file controls it. It's uh, automatically controlled by this. The one I'm trying to get into. Okay, etc. DHCP. DH client config. DH client D, that is it. Well, let's look at it. I mean, maybe I need to make a DH client content file for all I know. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's go to F9. And we're going to file view. DH client D, cannot view, not a regular file. Oh. Okay, so I don't have one of those files. Fedora. So maybe, yeah, okay. So since now my original instructions were for Fedora. Um, so this little thing he's saying, I may be going, I may have be chasing a rabbit down a deep, deep rabbit hole. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm not going to edit that file yet. Uh, I think I'm going to need to, but I'm not sure. Because I, I don't know why I have Bishop Code out. Maybe, why do I have that in there? I think that got automatically put in there somehow because of my uh, IP. My, I used my external IP address, and that would show up to the other DNS, you know, would show up to be bishopcode.us.server, unless I have it set somewhere in this system. It's in my router. Oh, yeah. I have my router set that way. Maybe it got it from my router. <clears throat> I probably need to change it. To, well, I know I want to change it to... Well, you can in the router. Usually, you can set it if you want. I guess it would depend on what program's talking to it. But just for your web server, you can set your, your um, domain name in there, or you can leave it blank. Uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't really impact anything, but really what it tells the world when it says, what, who are you? But this is the domain names, you know, server. So maybe it got it by from that by automatically. Because I don't believe I put. If I did, I forgot that I put bishop code .us. That was really mixed up because I don't. That's not my goal. If I'd, I I was trying to do it as a trial, you know, to see if it's gonna work by doing bishop code .biz first before I took my bishop code .com offline. See, like right now, my bishop code .com is all working. The only thing that's Actually, right this minute, Bishop Code Up Business is working too. Everything's working online while I'm doing this. But <clears throat> I thought, well, I don't mind taking Bishop Code Up Business offline and trying everything out because, you know, it's an odd uh, domain name anyway. <coughs> I got it because I thought I was going to use it for a different website. Didn't end up doing it and then. <coughs> Um, just put them both to the same main website. Okay, so go back to his little file again. Actually, I don't think it matters anymore. Only thing I'm kind of worrying about now is uh, CAD EC, ETC resolve config. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to exit no, let's leave him in that commander running. There's no point in exiting it right now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to because now I can, my terminal's acting weird. Well, let's see. There. No, it's not acting weird. I don't know why it's all cleared up there. but So my <clears throat> my etc resolve config file, bishopcode.us.2 and bishopcode.local domain. Now let's see. 
Am I still in ETC? Yeah. Let's try this. Oh, no. Let's don't do it that way. Let's go back. Let's see if it looks like I can edit it. Well, I keep... I need to see things. You know, when it, when it goes out of my view, I forget the names of the file. I'm looking for... Resolve config. Okay. Resolve config. Resolve config. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Now. <clears throat> there's no notes in this one like there was in his saying don't change this file and all that stuff so I'm thinking that maybe I can't actually edit this file all the mouse doesn't work yeah. but neither does my I can only view it I guess I guess if I my keyboard's not doing anything or anything so I can't edit this file in, with this uh, midnight commanders I guess it's just a viewer I thought it was an editor it says that you may get a in the notes I was reading on the other website, it says you might get something saying, uh, what do you want to open it up with? And they recommended using the, this one here because it's uh, <clears throat> easier to use and wor it's more, works more better. More better. <laughs> it's integrated well with uh, Midnight Commander. So anyway, generated by Network Manager. Well, it's just what he was saying, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to edit this. Generated by Network Manager. Okay, so, uh, yeah, but the name server shouldn't be my router. It should be this machine. Okay, so that's got to be changed one way or the other. Um, so, yeah, I think there is, I do have, there. this is going to help me. I'm just not, if I can ever get it all straight in my head. Okay. Uh, somewhere I saw commands about, Oh, yeah, restarting network manager and all that stuff. Okay. So, uh, I don't even have a DH client config file, though. That's what I don't get. Okay. Network manager. Yeah, well, let's just stay right there. Well, let's stay right there <clears throat> so I can remember where to go. ETC DHCP. I'm back in HTC again. Oh, I'm not in folders yet. Usually not this inept at doing what I'm trying to do here. Maybe I'm tired. I, I did kind of think I was getting pretty tired. But I've been trying to get to this point all day, and I wanted to do it, you know? Okay. Oh. That was a folder anyway, you goof. I was trying to open a folder. Say, no, crony, SH. Why is there crony in there? If I'm in the right folder, DHCP. ETC, DHCP. And then he opened up <coughs> DHC client. So, but the only thing I have in mind, oops, only thing I have in mind is DHC client. Crony SH, which I'm not going to mess with, but I want to see what's in it. Let's see what we got in our Chrome tab here. Crony config. Server file. Lib crony helper, crony restore. Doesn't seem to have a job in there. So 
server file. Well, except for that, I guess that server file, whatever that has to do with anything. I'm not going to edit that. <clears throat> okay, so I don't have the file that he's saying to edit. And uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and do F10 and get out of Midnight Commander. I think I am. Oh, I hit F11. Can't see. There we go. Get out of Midnight Commander. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do the cat. Oh, I already did that, didn't I? Cat resolve config. What folder am I? I'm in. Okay. Nano. Resolve config. Now, I could edit it with nano. But if you're not supposed to, I think maybe when I set it up, I know, well, maybe, no, I didn't because I'm almost certain I didn't put bishopco.us.2 in there and or bishopco.local domain. I think that was already put in there. And I think all that was auto generated and it's getting it from my router. If I did edit that, I don't remember it. So uh, let's see. How do you get out of here? I think you just hit X for exit. See, uh, Nano tells you. No, that's not it. I don't want to edit anything. <clears throat> okay. Usually you want to have, you can have a return after the last line. Oh, and this one I'm not sure. Um, oh, I think it's control X for exit, right? Out, so on, so on. See, the Nano I like because it tells you what to do. Control X for exit, I think. Is what I think that little funny little thing next to it, that real deal there tells you to hit control save modified buffer let's see no will discharge no we just hit in and it went it took off okay <clears throat> so this is what i use nano is what i end up using to edit things i finally got the one command that er, it's w q write and quit that's the one command you use i'm going to close that other page to get out of uh, Vim. That's what everybody likes to use is Vim, the text editor. I, Nano tells you what to do in there, and I like that. Uh, but in the Midnight Commander, they were saying they recommend you use theirs instead of Nano, specifically because it works better with their Midnight Commander. All right, <clears throat> so... See, I haven't... I mean, I may not be able to really figure things out until I do send my GoDaddy. Well, <clears throat> firstly, you can see it now, so while I'm talking, about it, you can see it, so I can talk about it while you can see it. See, right now I have no forwarding set up. Now, I could just forward it to my IP address. But what would, no, I would forward it to my, what I was thinking is if I have my, like, ns1.bishopco.biz name server set up, I would forward it to, if it would let me in there, I'd forward it to ns1.bishopco.biz. And then it, then that should uh, make it work, I would think, and still keep the default name servers that, like they want you to do, which I'm sure that I know they're better. I think I've used my own. I think I set it to that DynDNS or that afraid.org. I mean, that free DNS afraid.org or something, whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> before, and it worked. It, it, it gave, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but. I do change this well, I can click on that and show what I was talking about okay there's the defaults and then there's custom and then it tells you that little blurb about what they recommend and they do have templates for if you're using these but down here you can you've got two spots to put in your own name server so I would that's where I would just put my whatever I name it or whatever it's already named I don't can't remember doing that but ns1.bishopcut.biz I think I would do I think I would do one for every website, bishop.biz, bishop.com. I think that's what I would need to do. Unless I just need to do one for the main machine, you know, like NS1. Well, you wouldn't, couldn't call it NS1. What it is named now, you know, the machine itself is called bishopco, bishopco.local, you know, bishopco local host. That's its local host name. <clears throat> no, maybe it would be, it has to be a, a real domain name, though. So it can't just be bishopco ns1.bishopco okay. so that's why I think I'd have to do one for every uh, if I understand it right I need to use my real qualified domain names as the name of my 
name server. <clears throat> That's what I think. But it's got to be configured in the files before it's going to work. So, uh, and I got I want to make sure that the name server itself is actually working before I go put it live online and, and change anything in my GoDaddy settings. <clears throat> And so when I try to do, I did it a while ago. Well, let's just do it this way. I'll go back through my memory of my there in this lookup. Can't find it. <coughs> what about that other command? I think it's still going to be in there. Let me keep going back. I don't know how far. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, there we go. Host TNS Bishop code biz. Now that shows my uh, what's in GoDaddy right now. Now instead of doing Bishop code biz, let's do the IP address. I got to hit a comma instead of. You should be able to. This is uh, get what they call a reverse lookup. Not found. <clears throat> okay. So you can put in the domain name. That's the forward lookup, I guess you'd say. And then they call it the reverse lookup. Not found. Now, it could be that something's not configured, right? <coughs> All I know is I was following um, something that should, that I thought sounded like it would make it work. And it, what I did did work. But there's so many variables of how you set it up. And I didn't know at the time that you need, if you want a name server, you need to call it a name server. And I do, did know at the time that there's a difference between a local name server and a web server. But NS needs to be in the right places and not uh, <coughs> for like a mail server, a mail domain server and all that stuff. So, uh, okay, so it's not found, but that was the fix. What I went around for, for an hour about here. That was the fix for this, what I'm getting. Uh, now, maybe I just need to make, no, I wouldn't need to. I think I, think I need to not uh, not follow anything that's to do with CentOS because I already found out year, several years ago that there's quite a bit of difference in the setup, especially to do with the server stuff on CentOS because things that I already knew how to do wouldn't work. And it just drove me nuts. And I just quit messing with CentOS. <clears throat> there's differences in CentOS. So... Even though, well, I, I was doing searches on, you know, YouTube, and I put in Fedora, you know, DNS name server, Fedora, DNS, Fedora, D, Linux DNS name server, but there's not that many that are specified for Fedora. <coughs> of course, <coughs> there's a bunch for Red Hat, <coughs> but uh, <coughs> I didn't, uh, I kind of looked at the ones that looked like it was, Try, closest to what I'm trying to do, basically. So anyway, um, I'm trying to think how well, I want to do this. Then my uh, I've got hundreds of screenshots. So what I did though is, uh, yeah, see, I moved I moved all the screenshots I have comp since I've been doing this, trying to set this up over to this folder about my websites. So instead of flumming through, thumbing through all of those, I'm going to do this. I made a few screenshots. I was thumbing through them, and I made a few screenshots of the things that I want to do. <laughs> so uh, I'll open that up, and I just think, yeah, it's, it's it opening up in Grinview still. Okay. It's a bit slow. For some reason, I've used it for years, and I lo I've loved Grinview, but for some reason, it's taken forever to get to where it will respond. It's like it's, you know, oh, opening up really slow. I don't think the machine's being overloaded. Yeah, I see nothing's happening here in the resource usage. It's just something about Grinview, right? See, no. Well, it is overloading the machine. Look at that. Uh, I didn't want to go back. <clears throat> so it's doing something. It may have a bug in it now that it never had before in Fedora 28. But I'm doing the, you now it's finally started moving. I'm using my keyboard keys to go through the screenshots. Let's see. I did some new screenshots since I did this. But I, I installed, uh, oh, I found two cool apps, Logwatch and Monitor. I remember Monitorix, and I didn't, I opened it up. And it, they're both command lines, but that Logwatch shows you, 
like all the logs on your system right there in that window. There's a lot to read through. So I just kind of glanced through it and then, you know, got out of there. But anyway, those are interesting. <clears throat> I put them on this Fedora 28 machine. I didn't put them on the servers. So I was looking for webmin is what I was looking for, and I ended up finding fail to ban, and I thought, oh, yeah, I wonder if I even have that on my Net Pro Max. So I need to check that. And that was <laughs> a screenshot that I took, and I was like, what? I need to go find out why I saved that. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> and uh, what am I looking at now? Oh, yeah. These, I took a screenshot of a screenshot to give me the number of the screenshot so I could go find it. So, uh, okay, I went too far. I, went, I must have been going too fast. That. Where are the others? Did I move those? Oh, I think I moved them. I sure did. I moved them to the directory. Let's see. You can actually go to folder. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. <coughs> so you can type in there, Don the websites. There we go. The most everything you can do that, you can start typing and it'll take you there. <clears throat> I didn't know I had another folder inside of there. Oh, that's from a web page I saved. Okay, now I think it goes in reverse order when you're doing it in this thumbnail mode. <clears throat> yeah, here's my screenshots. Now, I like to keep it in operation. Yeah, no, I didn't close the program, so I didn't look. I didn't have to wait for it to open up again. I thought for a second. And I'm gonna close this now, so I don't have as many things running. Yeah. Look, yeah, Gwenview is using 22 percent, 21 percent of my CPU. So that's what it is. Gwenview has started hogging CPU. Look at that. Why? Now it's going back down. Okay, it went back to normal. So there's my problem. <clears throat> I may have to quit using it. Well, look at there. When I went to a new folder, it started that again. Uh, not not responding. Well, I'm already in it, so let's go ahead and use it. I think. Where am I? That is, oh yeah, uh, Zone Minder. Now that could help me helped me a lot I hadn't thought about that and to finding out what every little detail about well when it's on the line well actually I can point it to local or <coughs> well anyway I don't it could help it could be helpful but right now I think it's just these config files now what's this okay this is the one with the GUI bind configuration GUI that's not available I tried it it's not available in Fedora 28 and I didn't have it installed in my Fedora 14 I had the one for Apache web server this is yeah you know, how how to set up multiple websites, but it is in CentOS 7. But that gives you it doesn't look too hard to just add more websites. Uh, I just need to follow that syntax. Webmin, it's not in the Fedora repos I looked, uh, but I did the, the web. You I saw it the other day. Uh, I guess you have to manually install it. So, but anyway, there was saw some commands. Okay. Uh, hands-on yeah this is a real good one that was hard with the Indian guy I was talking about really hard to understand and moving pretty darn fast but it was really good and thorough now here's his po talking points um, these are this is his 10 steps install the DNS packages uh, assign a static IP I need to go ahead and do that that might help with all my problems here <clears throat> and then actually I don't know about that but anyway I need to do that I decided I should do that assign a uh, FQDN for server and I see each one of these were like this one that's down here that's the one he's actually on anyway and he went through them one at a time uh, this was a probably about an hour almost an hour long video I think but it was it was a good one it really was I almost didn't watch it because it was so hard to understand the fellow I mean he's really hard to understand but uh, it was worth it once I got in a way to where I could listen and 
understand, try to understand. Uh, anyway, uh, configure ETC host, configure and this. This is why I saved that screenshot. Say, like ETC host, resolve config. That's what we were just going through. Name config, uh, ETC RFC zones, and uh, change forward and reverse zones, and then change the group ownership. Oh, yeah. You need to change the group ownership of your zone. Oh, I remember the zone files. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I wonder if I can do that in that win that commander. I think I can. So this is a good one to have open or to use. I was thinking I might go through these screenshots and follow along them, but as much trouble as I just had <laughs> going through that one. What's this one here all about? This is another one. Looks like the one that was in Fedora. One of them was actually done in Fedora 14. It was on with all the GUI stuff. I think, I'm not sure why this one is. Oh, that was where I could start going through those if I wanted to. Dad got it. If I go to uh, 175603, I can't show you what I'm trying to point at at the top there. Okay, and uh, hands on, that was just the beginning. Yeah, the beginning of this 10 things, or the screenshots of it. And then there's my webmin. I want to remember to go check on webmin. I may want to install it. But I don't think I want to install it on the on the ten, on this small hard drive. Wait till I put it in the. Well, I might. <clears throat> if it would help me do all this stuff, I just need to go look up webmin and see. I can't remember all its features now. If it can help you set all this stuff up, in the GUI, it might be better. I had been thinking, well, it might be better to follow the step-by-step -step instructions and because I don't know, you know, those 10 steps. Well, now I've at least got this to go by. I know I need to go check each one of those, but I had no clue. So I just had to follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the command line. And the other, th well, the other thing is, you know, I have no GUI so I can, on the Net Pro Max, so I had to do it remotely. That's the other thing. But Webmin is a remote admin tool, so. This one is setting up the, uh, I think it's the zone files or setting up the virtual hosts and all that. So that's how you set up multiple websites. And uh, this one is the GUI program. That is zone minder to help me remember to use zone minder. Okay, to, if I need to, to check things out. I can, it can just tell you all the paths it goes and everything else. I have that on my system. <coughs> okay, so... Um, Yeah, that's the last one of his. I watched his, uh, yeah, he was in uh, CentOS, in Red Hat 7 and CentOS. Well, so maybe all those instructions, that was good, but it, the files are evidently are not in the same places. And, and that was, I believe that was going to be, I don't think it's, see, it doesn't say here what it's on, you know, CentOS, but he, this same guy, so he's probably was working on CentOS and or Red Hat, so. Red Hat might be laid out a little different than Fedora. It could be. <clears throat> I've never never touched Red Hat. Uh, you used to couldn't without paying for it, but I saw they've got like a, a program where you can try you can do it try it out for free now. And um, set up CentOS servers and virtual machines and stuff. But uh, I was considered doing that, but. <clears throat> Oh, I was like, why won't it switch? Well, because you're in the screenshot. Okay. So, um, sign a static IP address. So, if I'm going to do anything like that, I'm going to reset the terminal. I've got all that junk in there. <coughs> okay. Um, I don't know. I'm having trouble finding things again, so I'm going to sort this. It doesn't take too long to do it since I don't have a G in bookmarks on my new system. <coughs> OK. 
Okay. Now it'll be in alphabetical order. And theoretically, it'll make it easier to find there. Door 28 DNS. Okay, let's sort these by alphabetical order too. Oh yeah, I know what that is. <clears throat> That's named config. And uh, localhost zone. See, it's telling you to point to the zone files and stuff. And this was the first day of. <coughs> Let's see, all settings done. This is kind of a snippet out of a whole long thing. I hit the back button up there on sudo. Starting it. Hmm. On SUS Linux. Okay, so that might not be helpful anyway. Open SUS. <coughs> What this is, it's going to be different too. Good with commands. This must be the, no, that's not the one I followed. Oh, that's about the author, authoritative and non authoritative answers on there. This is the one I thought I was opening up. I'm just going to open them up so I'll know what's what. Yeah, this is one that had what looked like a pretty good example. This is for etc named config again. allow transfer and actually when I after I got done some of the errors that came up told me how to edit it so that it would come up and say it was going to work and this is name config again and it see these are a little different each one depends on what you're doing with it <clears throat> I think this is the fedora now this is the one I followed okay so we install Go in this firewall. Uh, that's already been done, of course. System CTL enabled named. Uh, install Y bind. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start right there just to be safe and do these commands. I think I'll close that page for GoDaddy until I need it. Let's see. I, mean, I don't need to sudo or su or anything because this is already a root terminal. <coughs> already enabled. Okay. Now I know that it's already enabled. Close that so I won't accidentally go to it again. I'm just going to reload the firewall anyway. Okay, reloaded the firewall. This is the one I followed to, to do it. Okay, now. Uh, Caddy OF, sudo t name config. Oh, and it gives you some examples. Make the name config load zone file of a private. Load zone file of a, this is a private network. Okay, so that's the thing. This, this doesn't get me all the way to town because config because this is for a private wrong con uh, private network but let's look at it okay yeah and I had to the errors I got once I was done I probably won't edit this but let's look at it um, the errors I got when I was done hmm I thought it would have opened it up <clears throat> Oh, I think it's working. Maybe it'll come back and tell me in a minute. Yeah, this just tells you the cat command, whatever it stands for, just tells you what's in there. I don't think it'll let you edit it. Let's just wait a minute. <coughs> it may come back and say, 
I've, I've, I've forgotten about that, but some commands, see, when you get the little right uh, arrow, arrow type thing, I forgot what you really call that. When you get that, um, it will, uh, well, when one of the, in, oh, if you do uh, NS lookup, and, and that's all you do, you don't get, put the IP or the domain name, it'll, it'll ask you what you want to do next. <clears throat> This one, I don't know what maybe what it's exactly doing is waiting for me to tell it what I want. So it says sudo t. I don't think that would hurt. I think I put sudo in here in this terminal. Sometimes if you put sudo when you're already rooted, it will not get not work and give errors. But. Uh, <coughs> Unless I didn't get the whole command. Now that's what that right there is. What uh, it's hard to tell in this thing. What's what's their examples and what's part of their command? But it's yeah. Since it's on the next line, <clears throat> that that's part. And I can tell because I've seen them enough times now. I know that highroom.com was his his you know domain name that he was using or example domain i think since it's private it was just a made up domain name you know I was, well i mean it, it said it was private so high room is yeah high room too so that's you know whatever reason they wanted to name it that so uh, i really don't know what to do there so yeah it's it's ready for me to type in it and i don't know what to do uh, I'll just have to hit reset because I have no clue what else to do. I'm going to take the sudo out of there and see if that makes any difference. I don't think it will. No, it doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I don't know what, whatever it is that's going to do for me, I don't know. I'm going to get it out of there, so... This time I'm going to say nano etc config. Now we got the file. Oh yeah, I remember this the big red blotch in there. Okay, so <coughs> name config provided by Red Hat bind package C. Red Hat the maker of Fedora. The NS server is a caching only name server as a Local oh, as a local host DNS resolver only. Oh, hmm. that tells me that it ain't gonna do internet like I want it to do. But it won't resolve on local hosts. <laughs> but like I, said, I guess I made sense of that earlier. Uh, the reason I was able to get to the Net Pro Max when I put the my external IP in GoDaddy is because I pointed it to it manually. So it wasn't the name server working and telling it where it was. <clears throat> so I knew that. I figured that out this this, this morning or this evening. Uh, I thought it was working yesterday at the time when I did it. I think I did. I think I was wondering. But anyway. Caching only name server, local host DNS server only. So I may not have, well, heck, it may not be available. I don't know. I'll just have to see. Keep going out of here for a while longer. Oh, okay. So user share doc bind sample, okay, for example name config file. Okay, that's helpful. Let's see. Now, options. Okay, now, that makes it go nuts, doesn't it? Okay, so we're listening on port 53. Oh, and I, cha I had to change that. I don't know why it goes nuts like that. I can't even read it when it does that. But uh, any. I had to change, ended up changing that to any by the advice of something I saw. Uh, listen on port 53. Now this is for, D, you know, this is 
DNS name server. So, but it says local. Okay, now directory var named. Is there any way to put that so that it doesn't make it go nuts? I guess it doesn't matter. I'll put it like that. Okay, and then uh, when I get on it, it goes wraps around. Okay, well let's quit doing that because I can't read it like that. Okay. Dump file, statistics, mem statistic. Okay, now allow query 192.168.0.1. So I put that in there. I thought, <clears throat> okay, now I remember I originally had it. I, I saw it in one of those examples. You put forward slash. And they had like a number in there, 47 or whatever. So I figured that meant how many clients up to, up to like your, uh, like uh, when your router, when you set up things, forwarding and stuff, how many clients uh, in your DHCP server, how many do you want to serve? How many from one to, you know, 50 or 200 uh, clients do you want to allow? That's what I thought it meant, but it caused an error, and I ended up having to take it down to just like that. Now, this might be my what I need to change to the IP address of this machine, though. This right here. <coughs> uh, if I put it to my external IP address, then that changes. So I definitely don't want to, you know, and I don't even know if that would work. Or not, but kind of well. With it saying it's local only, it wouldn't. But the thing is, is that it changes anyway. I, what I want, what I'm thinking is, I want this to work. I don't know how to say it, but if I can use my local IP address, and of course I'll set it somewhere. I'll have to get to the where you set it to static. And uh, I guess it wasn't in there in those instructions. I didn't see it yet. That's one of the first things to have you do, and it. Hadn't done it yet, but anyway, <clears throat> set it to static IP address, and then put that static IP address in here, and then the router. Uh, as long as this can talk to the internet, that's the thing. Uh, when the route when it talks to the internet, it needs to give out the right IP. Well, what I was thinking is maybe I'll have to use the router as long as it talks to the internet and says. Oh yeah, if it says hey, and this is I'm so and so one, you know, an internal IP address, then it won't come back to my. I don't know. I guess I'm turning myself around again. Okay. <clears throat> if you are building an authoritative DNS server, do not enable recursion. Okay. Well, I, it doesn't. Well, if I can build an authoritative, I will. But I don't care if it is, just as long as it works. If you are building a recursive caching DNS server, you need to enable recursion. Well, I, the recursion is turned on. Oh, I see. So this is defaulted. I guess that's what it's defaulted to. So actually, I guess I need to turn off recursion. And that is right down here. Turn off recursion. I'm just going to go. I'm not going to change anything right now. I'm going to go through each one of these files and see what's in there and see if I have learned enough to figure this out. Because you have to have the overall thing right. And maybe what I'm going to have to do is go find a more detailed hand, you know, written out instead of videos. I watched videos because I just felt like I could comprehend them better than reading through all these files, you know, again and again today <clears throat> and yesterday. But maybe I'm going to have to find... Well, now I do have a better overview in my head if I can get, keep it long enough. And... Because uh, now things are making more sense. And so then I can find one that's telling you step by step what do you put in each config file. I can't find a GUI to do it, so I might be able to do it with a GUI now. but uh, Especially with that 10 points thing. But uh, <clears throat> I don't have that, so... Um, so you don't have to worry about the syntax and all that junk if you have a GUI to do it. That's why it'd be so great if there was one. But there's not one. Unless I could find one. Well, a webman. Maybe I better look into webman. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, 
Yeah, I might need to turn off recursion if it's on right now. That was on by default. And then maybe that's all you need to do to turn it into a uh, authoritative DNS server. Okay. I guess it, I thought authoritative DNS servers when I was learning was only uh, by, you know, authorized servers by the, by the Internet police, you know, by the, by the people that own everything, you know. But I guess not. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, I don't want to serve up everybody else's I, uh, I, uh, server names, just mine. But I guess that's all it would do. That's all I'm going to put in it. Yeah, that's what I have. Okay. Uh, recursive caching DNS server, which is what it said it is right up there. Caching server. I wonder if I don't even have enough stuff installed then because I just got what, when I said install DNS server, clicked a box, install DNS server. That's what I got. This is what I got when I was installing for North Wing. Okay, so, um, yeah, and allow query. I put that in there thinking, well, That should cover. Well, like I said, I thought I put in that dash 200 is what I originally did, and I thought, okay, I can allow any IP. I wonder if I could put listen on port. I wonder if I think I already tried. No, I didn't try that. If I, I wonder if I could put any right there, just like I did up there. That's port 53, but any is like any host, I believe. <clears throat> and so that's fine, I think. Uh, and I think that gets around some of the extra, like putting in a specific host that can query your clients that can query your host. Um, so allow query, if I could put any in there, that would solve everything. Because that's fine. That's what I want. That's going to be on the internet. <coughs> so, uh, but I, so there was an IP in there, and so I put mine in there. But I thought the one in my router was the one to put. But anyway, <coughs> that way, because the Internet's talking to my router. So if the query comes from my router, from the Internet to my router, then that's good. And maybe that is still good. We'll see. Okay. And if you're building the authoritative, authoritative, turn that off. Okay, if your recursive DNS server has a public IP address. Okay, if your recursive, okay, I wasn't, I should have kept on going. You need to enable recursion. You're building a recursive caching DNS server. You need to enable recursion. Okay. If your recursive DNS server has a public IP address, you must enable access control to limit queries to your legitimate users. Failing to do so will cause the server to become part of a large-scale DNS amplification attack. Maybe you don't want to do that. Implementing BCP38 within your network would greatly reduce such service I think I need to change recursion to no <laughs> because I don't I'm not wanting just a local server I want <clears throat> um, I want you know to send my just to tell the world this is where my websites are <laughs> with the okay so I want a name server pu public name server whatever however you're supposed to say it okay so I'm gonna hit control X Get just to close that file. I'm not going to edit it right now. I'm trying to get in my head what it is I need to do. Okay, now. Yeah, all that stuff. Master. See, there was none of that in there either. Type master. That's not in there. File. Hiram zone. Oh, zone files. Okay, none of that was in there. But the zone files are in here. Was there? I wish I didn't. I wish I had that open again. Okay, let's open it up again. Yeah, but you know what? <clears throat> Some of that stuff. Oh. That's really not what. Oh, well, if you'd go on down, you'd see the file. Recursion, yes. Okay. DNSSEC enable, DNSSEC validate, manage keys. File HTTPS Fedora. Why is it going to Fedora? I don't know. 
I guess that's where the keys are generated and kept, maybe. <clears throat> well, actually, that's just a... Oh, the Fedora Project channel. Okay, include name, so-and-so zones, include root key zone. Okay, bishop code out biz. Uh, master type bishop cut up biz zone. Okay, yeah, I remember creating my zone files and had to do some changes that didn't work at first, and it was real hard to understand. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. There we go. So I have my zone files and everything, but I do think I might need to change. I really think I just need to turn recursion off. <clears throat> and my zone files, I'll have to look in them and see. And then also, see, I will have to add. Uh, a new zone for bishopco.com and Don Songs and on and on like that. So I guess all I have to do is just copy that and change the IP. I mean the domain name. Copy that, paste it, you know, copy it, paste it. That's exactly how the, you know, the instruction people were doing it. Okay, so next. Yeah, okay. I know this part is working and it is does run. Pseudo said. Test allow query. Well, let's copy that. See what we get when we run that. Oh. Oh, now I guess this is what. I don't want to mess anything up by running this stuff. Huh. Listen on port. Oh, you know what? I think that this, I don't know if this is going to actually do this or just let you see the file to edit. I think this is going to do this. And I don't want that 127 and all that junk. That messes me up. That I would break it again. <clears throat> ECC name config. I'm scared to go do that. You would think you might have. Well, if this is a command to, you know, sometimes you're opening a file and editing it, and sometimes it's a command to actually do something. Allow query from 192.168.11.0. Now, here's where I got that idea right there. See that? That dash 24. That did not work, and I had to go through all kinds of error logs to get it to work. And it told me what it suggested what I should do, and I did it. So let's don't don't use that for now. Let's get out of there. That that whatever that said is, I don't want it. Now change zone file of private network append a record for host of cat eof bar. Oh, yeah, I have to work that out and put mine in there. All that stuff. Okay. So what I can do is go through that 10 things and then just, I just go open up the specific files with nano or, or uh, whatever's easier, nano or. Uh, <coughs> um, the file manager. Restart. Named. Check config. See, I can do name check config. Name check zone values in the zone file. Execution result. Cadency resolve config. Run ping command. Yeah, and then that's the end of it. Okay, so <coughs> let's get right here. Go ahead and just do that. Okay, that just worked. No, no errors or anything. And uh, well, I did that a while ago, I think. That should come up. I think I ran this a while ago. But can't just be in the right place. You got to be in. Some weird place for it to work. 
Generated by network monitor, search Bishop Codec US.2. Yeah, I was one of the first things I did. Name server 68.0.1. Well, the name server, I probably put that in there not thinking straight. This is the name server. Well, it should be the, this thing's IP address. So I may have to. Well, I'm still not sure if I can edit that resolve config or have to edit some other file. <clears throat> okay, and then ping which I did a while ago. I did all that stuff. Okay, so that's good to have commands to use. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, here this is. I still have it open. Assign a static IP address. Now, that didn't tell me how to do that. Um, okay, there is another one in there. Uh, let's see. It says at the beginning of every one of the, uh, I'll make sure I'm not going to, yeah, okay. <clears throat> when I click on it, I don't want to get rid of the one. I, I think this is the same one. Okay. This one is short and sweet, that's for sure, and it is for a local. It says that, so I don't actually want a local. Okay, that one doesn't tell you that how to do that either. <coughs> I just remembered one thing that I can do. I can one thing I can remember. What happened? I have config. That's uh, I believe that'll just. One six eight dot zero dot one fifty three. That's what I want to be my static. That's its IP, and of course, it's going to get it from the router. And I thought, well, I don't need to do that because the router's. Going, I'm going to keep my router like that. But uh, I don't. I got a feeling that things won't work right unless I do that. <coughs> from all the things I kept seeing. Loop back. Yeah, the loop back running one two seven zero to zero. Yeah, I don't know the commands to assign it as a static IP. There's good info with commands. I don't know if it has anything about. No, it doesn't have anything. <coughs> this was commands. It does have some good commands to find out things like NS lookup, and host TNS, and all that stuff, which I've already been doing. So. <laughs> I'm gonna rename that so that I will quit saying what is that one there we go okay <coughs> now I don't think that one has anything about static IP. I think this one is actually for an older version. NF install. Well, that's the beginning of it. TC config. Let's see if there's. Oh, it says for door 28 right there. Install. Well, that says install for door 28. Bind install. Install bind. That 
was done with global IP address. Yeah, see, there's the where I got that ex idea there. <coughs> <laughs> but then it says, well, actually, that's a private IP. And yeah, it is 172. You can tell by the, well, not always, but anyway. But is there a next page or what? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Install bind. That's where I'm at. Configure zones. Every world. External zone. Yeah, look at there. External zone. <clears throat> that might help me. Yeah. This one's. But some of the ideas I got from here are what were mistakes that or wouldn't work, or wouldn't run. This is. Harder to follow because it's kind of like you've got to understand it better to start with. To follow these. Start and verify bind. Enable name. Start named. Oh, okay. I'm understanding a little bit more now. Let's see if it has. Yeah. Dig. I don't really understand. I saw that in one of the videos. Dig commands. Tells you all about it. <coughs> but, uh, I mean, I could try it. Let's see. It doesn't go there unless you click. I good. Oh, it came up. There's my uh, IP address. Huh. So what it comes up to be. Can't find where I typed. There it is. Yeah, it's got all all the extra IPs, and I think that's because it's still going through the <coughs> default GoDaddy servers, and for, and being uh, well, you know it's being forwarded, <coughs> but it still arrives at my router's IP. And that's my internal IP, so that's what's got me <laughs> going well. And I mean that it's going past my external and seeing the internal IP. So now that one, I would figure it would come up pretty much. Well, it doesn't come up the same. It comes up more like bishopco.biz does. It just doesn't have all the extra go GoDaddy stuff. It just has. My IP, my, my external IP, and then my internal IP, the port 53. <coughs> so, um, okay. Doesn't tell me a whole lot of, the, you know, I mean, it's kind of just like running those other commands for me. I don't quite. It doesn't tell me it's I don't know I'll just keep looking firewall that's what I already did a while ago oh that's yeah uh, 
I'm being careful not to fix anything until I'm sure if it's, sure if it's broke. That's why I'm just kind of, it may seem like I'm just fiddle farting around. Start and enable bind. Okay. Bind see root environment. I think that's the uh, changing the. Uh, Oh, bind ch root. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's really different from the way I did it according to the other one. <coughs> ch root. That all I know is the ch root is to change. Let's see. I think this was already done. Everything's already working. I think this was done automatically when I installed it. Set C name record. Okay, now there's something. Var name server world dot land. Oh, well, that must be local then. Okay. Local area network. Hmm. <coughs> I forgot what SOA stands for. I N stands for internet. I didn't know. I saw that in one of the videos today. Capital I N. S O I. I don't remember. <coughs> so internet, internet, internet. Okay, so that means it's but it has a ten dot IP address. <coughs> There's just so much to this. <coughs> uh, for me to even understand by reading these files whether or not it's set up for you know local network or internet it might be maybe you can set them up for both you would i would think you could alias c name ftp got some ftp in this one and then this is your commands again back to the terminal This is what I was just doing, trying out with the dig command. <clears throat> C name. Okay, now let's go to configure slave DNS server. Okay, yeah, I remember them talking about that. Allow transfer localhost 172. Okay. I think I ended up putting in the, my yeah, name config. I think I'm on just as any if I remember right, which is good less complicated because I don't want to restrict it to any IP you know by vi by is another one like vim and nano if I remember right Let's see. I think so that's another editor And uh, um, let's see, I'm checking, make sure I'm still working over there. I don't hear myself yet. Yeah, there I go. Now, isn't that funny? This one starts with install bind, but I cannot find anywhere where it says set your static IP install bind utils bind and bind utils one of them just said install uh, basically like that DNFY install bind and put an and I didn't remember this put an asterisk after it and it'll install everything under you know to do with bind and they said just what you want you just need everything just do that everybody else usually says that right there install bind and bind utils this one is DNF, so well, this is for door 28 right there, and that's you know, that should be exactly you know, everything I need. I didn't, I got all turned around and didn't realize this one was actually probably about for door 28. I think everything here is about for door 28. See, it's got other subjects over here. <coughs> So this, but still, this one, 
This one's harder to follow the way it's written out for me. Yeah, that's just like my file I was reading right there. Okay, change, listen all. Okay, look at there, any. See, I did get some of those ideas from this one, I bet you. Yeah, <laughs> I went ahead and commented out IPv6. Now, yeah, okay, these are notes. See, the ones that are commented out, they're just kind of going, well, yeah, the ones that are commented out and they're pink, those are notes. This on IPv6, none. Change. Well, what I did was this one here, I just, uh, well, maybe I put none in there. Or I, I think another one said you could just comment the line out. Anyway, one way or the other, I'm not. I didn't, I turned off IPv6. Range. Okay, yeah, this says right here, range set, internal server, and so on. See, so I said allow query. I did, <clears throat> I guess I had local host, and uh, I didn't have 10 dot. I had 192.168, and then I put forward slash. I just put 200 because I figured, it, you know, Make it way up there where you don't ever get cut off. But I don't think that is like D when you set up DNS. That's not the same thing, I don't guess. Because it didn't work. I had to end up taking it out, and, and it just says whatever my key that I have in there. I don't know if it's my router or what. But <coughs> I think it's my router. What file am I looking at? ETC name. Let's, yeah, nano. Wait, I think you have to put a slash in front of it. Yeah. Let's just copy it. Let's see what, no, let's don't see what Vi looks like. I might not be able to get out of it. I might be too, might be one of those where you got to know all the commands to use it. Can't do control V. I'm so used to doing control V to paste. You can go up here and it seems to work every time. There we go. I keep forgetting that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was just in here looking at this, so, yeah, IPv6, none, any, on listening on port 53, any, any host, I believe is what we're talking about. Okay, so IPv6, any, or client, it would be, uh, none, <coughs> allow query, okay, now I put 192.168.0.1, because that's my router, and I want to come, you know, allow query see they put 10 dot now, this is all set up for a local allow transfer 10 dot but it's the forward slash i started out with uh, 10 dot one forward slash 200 is what i was talking about okay so that yeah it would have to be like that for it to work so this is not wrong okay and then if you're billing authoritative dns Okay, the notes that are in my file that came from you know the file as it was put in the machine uh, as it was installed recursion yes it's on <clears throat> but this is a local one so i still i guess i need to turn recursion off but it's, i'll wait on that still before i decide that and uh And then it says change all from here. Yeah, then you change it to your local, to your own settings, you know. Zone in, server world, of course, mine's going to be bishopco.com. And then, and I did know that you can make more than one zone entry <coughs> for your different, uh, different websites. They've got zone. They have zone in, zone server world, zone zero, zero, zero. I don't know what that's about. ARPA, well, that's like the thing that ARPANET. <laughs> that's the thing that part of the, the main system, I think. Let's see, what do I have? Recursion, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what I have is just... Dynamic. 
Okay, I have zone in file name.ca, which I guess I have. Everything is running and working. And then etc. And then my zone. Okay, see, so my zone's really short. It just has bishop code out biz and then bishop code out biz zone. <coughs> okay. So that looks like that's okay. I mean, that does actually look like it should work now that I'm starting to gather a little bit about how it is. Yeah, okay, zone in and all that other stuff. I didn't see anything about the ARPA in there, but I won't worry about that since I'm not having a problem. Where did it say change everything from here? Oh, change all from here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to have the right zone names and all that stuff. There's a lot more in this one than there is in mine, that's for sure. And these are commented out, allow query... Transfer. Okay, those are all commented out down there. <coughs> Could have been the original examples and they just kept them. I do that. I, I comment them out and leave them in there because they're good instructions. <laughs> like if I get something screwed up, I need to go, go back to square run, one. Okay, so yeah, let's get out of the zone file again. Now. Name config, but I don't get uh, why. Okay, this one doesn't say a word about setting your IP address and static. And maybe I don't think that would break anything since my router gives out that same IP address to this machine. But I do think, oh, for, for the long run, I think it's better to have it done. <clears throat> I guess I could look in the. Uh, one of these videos. Well, I can look at my screenshots, I guess, for that. I should probably run into that pretty quick. I think I will look for that next before I go on to anything else. I'm thinking that I should just, should have already probably just uh, put it back, you know, turned it back on to be on the Internet and seeing if I could. Figure out if it's going to show up there. Well, I'd have to go back into GoDaddy. <clears throat> and set it. I, I, what I, one thing I am wondering, if I forward it to... Oh, no, I need that. Yeah, what's the... I don't have... I never saw anything in these files. I went... Okay, that's what I was doing, looking through these, trying to look through each set of files. ETC hosts. Let's do that next. Click sign for FQDN. Static IP. Oh, I was stuck looking for how to set up a static IP address. That's what I was really trying to figure out. Okay. Uh, then what I would need is... I kind of want to keep this one. And Grinvy's not doing anything bad now. <coughs> but i um, kind of worried that it might. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave that one open. I guess I'll open up my browser, my file browser. I'll open. I'll use a different program, one that doesn't seem to give so much trouble. So these first screenshots. Let's go back to videos. There. Go back to the top of that almost double clicked I'm so used to being able to just double click that one opens up quick and doesn't seem to give the trouble <clears throat> okay there's the zone minder yeah okay there's where I was at on that Them going backwards through them is the thing. So let's try this. Start at this end. Oh, yeah. 
that's going to be, that's not how I want to do that. <clears throat> Those first few screenshots, oh, I clicked on it. Well, I just have to live with it. <clears throat> okay. Those first few screenshots show me the how to get started. Okay. That is that one with the GUI. This is the one on CentOS. Still might help me with what I'm looking for. Hands on. And this one is setting up DNS on Fedora. Okay, setting up DNS on Fedora is last four numbers are 175603. <coughs> Let's see if I can find it in here. I don't know if I can do it this way or not. Oh, I can see folders over there, but not. Let's go into the file manager and look. That's the way I'm going to find it. 175603. There it is. Let's go close this thing now. I don't want so many open. Actually, I'm going to close this one too. That one's easy to identify. 175603 are open to easy to find. <clears throat> Tried to get it to open up in the other folder, but I didn't do it quick enough. Let's just leave it. Other window, I mean. 175603. Now. Okay, so the first thing is. Yum uh, install system config bind. Next one is, <coughs> yeah, this is the one with the graphic. He's using the graphic setup, but I think it's still going to tell you about the, and see, you can kind of see if you got the overview of how what to do, then you can do it in there without worrying about all that syntax and all that stuff. <coughs> Let's see. But he goes a combination of command line stuff and in the graphic user interface. I can't search this. I have to look through it, and that's harder for me. So I'm looking for the IF config. He finds out his host, his IP. He always do that, and then host name, restart. It's pretty simple command if I remember right, but like I have config static IP address or something like that. He's back in the, this right here would be really cool if it was available, I think. This is a graphic user interface for setting up. <coughs> I sure wish it was available in the newer, in Fedora 28. types in a host name and then it tells you the host name but that's not going to really service restart I <clears throat> I don't imagine I took a screenshot of that because I didn't think I was going to do it service name status let's look let's just type that in there service named status Oops. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see what it says. What? Oh, there we go. Status. Clear internet. Demands. Window preset disabled. Active and running. This is why I don't want to change anything unless I really feel like it's going to help <clears throat> because it's working.
but it keeps saying Bishop Coda local domain network unreachable result unreachable resolving 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 and then uh, and I not quite sure what's going on with that manage key zone now trusted well it's and that's the end oh now I'm in that so uh, <coughs> I mean I'm there we go no I don't know how to get out of that uh, control X doesn't get you out go to the bottom doesn't make any difference hit in or arrow keys <coughs> What I have been doing when I get stuck like that is hitting reset. I kind of would like to save that. I was thinking I would like to copy and paste these commands and save them, but I'm just going to reset the terminal because that command there is good. Well, I've got the screenshots. It's just that I don't remember where this stuff is, and I've got hundreds of screenshots. Let's look up. In this lookup, I can remember for some reason. Some things I remember and some things I don't. Okay, now here's that where Mr. Fix-It for that. Which now I don't think, I'm not so sure that, what that, what that has, to, you know, pertains to me with, you know, what I need to do. Now this here, I, I think I would need to do in uh, HTTP. Oh, that's in config D. Oh, that's in the Apache. Oh, okay. That's not in the DNS server. That's in the Apache. <clears throat> now, I might be able, I'll look and see if that GUI Apache interface is available. I would. I could use it. And, uh, yeah, setting up virtual. Okay, that's what, you can do that in that in my Fedora 14 one that I have. You could do the set up virtual hosts in there. That would probably be easier than trying to do it in the files menu. Now that I'm beginning to under, I'm understanding it again now. But I tried it before and I actually messed up my machine. <laughs> Got it all out of whack. It couldn't get on the internet and stuff. <clears throat> I was just experimenting with it. What is this one doing? Still HTTP. Okay, VMATC host. Yeah, this is all patchy. See, it has two websites set up. This is still his telling you how to do that. And I know I'm going through here real fast, but I'm not trying to show this. I'm searching for it. Uh, just skimming it, trying to see if I can see something about setting that. And if there's anything else that can help me, but they're running CentOS there. Yeah, it says CentOS. It says CentOS, Red Hat, and Fedora in this video. But they're not all exactly the same. Second website, and then he sets up a little, just go, uses a Vim editor to, or one of them did, to edit their web, their HTML page to do their website. He had a little problem. He had to fix it. I remember that. He showed how to fix it. So... Oh, and there was this problem. He had that forward slash in there, which closes that, he said. So he took that out and made it just like that. So you don't want to close that. <clears throat> you want to close it when you're actually done, which the, I don't know. That's just the way he said it. I mean, this one shows to be, oh, okay, I see now. This is one open, you know, oh, yeah, that's open, I guess, and then this closed. Then that's open, okay, and then this closed the sections. That's kind of a lot like HTML uh, editing. He named that's a folder HTML2, that's not a HTML file. And then when you want to get out of uh, what is it, Vim, I think. I wonder if BI and Vim is the same. Anyway, WQ, write quit. <clears throat> I finally figured, found that out. Oh, now he's. He's kind of highlighting it. 
he restarted his web his HTTPD is the service that Apache that's the Apache web server restarted that and then uh, he was explaining some stuff and the video like I said I'll try to you can see the name of the video up there and stuff uh, but if I, if I can get around to it, remember it, I'll try to make a blog post and, and I'll put, because if, well, if I can, I'll just put the links right in the, my comments, but <clears throat> probably I'll make a blog post with all the links to all this stuff in there. So, because I've tried and tried to put, a, you know, links in there. And I think the if you copy and paste links from your bookmarks, it doesn't work. You just get the titles and then you have to put the URLs. Well, getting the URLs out of my bookmarks is a pain in the butt. But it's easy to do. I can copy and paste. I just use Thunderbird. Uh, put it all in a Thunderbird email and email it to my blog, and I'm done. So <clears throat> that's why I said I'll do it. And, and then I can just put the, you know, the URL uh, of my blog in there of, of that exact p page. Once I put that in, and then you'll be able to get to it easy. Okay, you still had some sort of problem. But first website, second website. He finally fixed it. So uh, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go all into that. But uh, okay, now here's the first of the guy. Now this is CentOS Red Hat Seven. He didn't say anything about Fedora, but this is the one I was his fix after this. This is the whole installation or the screenshots of his installation video. It's it's not real long, 21 minutes. <clears throat> And he's 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 uh, he's good. He's really fast. You probably if you're if you don't you know if you're not already knowing all this stuff, you're gonna have to pause it over and over like I did. I I pause it, take a screenshot, and then back up, and go forward. <clears throat> I mean, just constantly. Uh, I don't think I could with him. I couldn't. I wouldn't get anything out of it. But I just tried to watch the whole video. And normally, that's what I do with videos. I just watch them. You know, I don't. Very seldom do I have to pause them or anything. But. <clears throat> Most of my videos I watch are about things I really already know about anyway. I use, when it comes to watching videos, I'm usually watching stuff about woodworking, mechanics, and st stuff like that. Usually I get my instructions for computer stuff uh, from reading. But <clears throat> this is... I need the help of the talking uh, in, the, in the video. With this, it's really complicated. I don't know how to say that. Why I do what the way I do it. But. Um, BM is for BIM, yeah, I think. No, sorry. I don't even know what that's about at all. I don't know. It, it, I don't see the first command on there, so now I don't know why I took that screenshot. Maybe it was one that didn't work. Oh, there it is. Hostname CTL. <clears throat> host name ctl okay once i'm over in here i get confused about where to go okay there we go bishop code local domain icon name computer desktop how funny chassis desktop machine door 28 fedora Kernel. Okay, that's just information about this machine. Okay. And see, here's. Well, I can at least get a screenshot of that, can I? Okay. There we go. That's good enough. Because if I go to all the trouble to copy and paste and save it to a file, it's just going to really be. You know what? I'm going to close that until I need it again. <coughs> okay. Name config. Well, I can't avoid it in the videos of, of the this first thing they do is say make it a static IP. Now I don't see it. <clears throat> so I guess I'll have to watch a video, but I won't do it during my video. Let's see. So I'm going to stop because I know that this one is pretty pretty long and lots of 
it's just kind of more of the same but a little bit different way of different setup and uh my eyes are getting where i can't follow what i'm trying to read so uh okay so <clears throat> um i'm gonna close that that way i want to keep help me not be help me not know which way I, where i want to go okay <clears throat> um just do that so I don't mess up. Well, I got. I want to get into my bookmarks again. I haven't even got to the point of trying this thing on the internet again. I, I keep thinking, well, maybe I should just try it again. But set it, you know, and uh, set do some of the things I've been thinking about doing in GoDaddy. But uh, oh, I know there's one thing I don't know, and that is what is my what is it? Uh, does it have an NS1 type thing in it? You know, what do, I, do I even have a name server thing set up in it right? You know, um, and I haven't found the file. Oh yeah, that's why I needed that. Uh, image viewer. Boy. I was trying to find the one that uh, maybe that one will work. I'm trying to find one that's lightweight. <clears throat> yeah, this one opens up really quick. Can I go open up? I don't know. I don't ever use it. So, only way I've ever even used it at all is to double click on a file. Open with. I guess that'll open a file. Okay, so uh, let's try it and see. That'll make me have to page through the whole thing, I'm afraid. Where is it? Okay, yesterday, today. Okay, so it's in a different order. <coughs> No, that's not going to work. This one's not working. I'm used to going through the file manager, so let's just do that again. This one should be close to where I want to be. Open with. This one works pretty quickly and good. Okay, yeah. Here's what I wanted right here. <coughs> okay. close the file manager again okay so static ip fqdn for server that might be one of the things i want i need his slideshow yeah surely i wonder you know sometimes they uh not not well it is a slideshow but when I'm, whatever those microsoft presenter things some, sometimes they put them on their video and let you download them <clears throat> but uh especially if it's an open source project but this is actually some kind of school and uh really it's kind of a it really ends up being an advertisement trying to get you to go to their school uh, but uh thing's going to sleep but uh <clears throat> Yeah, anyway, getting back to that point in the video, of course, would take 10 minutes. You could hit somewhere that, well, this this is like 20 minutes in or something. So, well, it tells you right there. Oh, yeah, 38 minutes in. So I could go to there and find it. But, well, we're getting to the point where he was actually doing this would be way back at the beginning. Though. <clears throat> he was just doing a rundown. So, uh, so one disadvantage, of, that's why one reason why stuff like this I usually prefer to read it and then I can copy and paste and do all that. So ETC hosts. Well that was something I was gonna do is go to ETC hosts. Okay. Don't have anything else in my 
quote marks I can use. What was I thinking I was going to open up? I was ready to open something up. I've already forgot. Okay. I just did this, didn't I? ETC hosts. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't opened this one up lately. Local hosts, local domain. Okay. I don't know what I would. I haven't been into this one, I don't think. To e <coughs> I don't know. I'm not going to edit it, that's for sure. Okay. <coughs> ET resolve con. <coughs> <coughs> now we know <coughs> today we know what that is i've forgotten what all was in it but i was in there a hundred times so i won't go in there name config i've been in there a hundred times okay etc uh i wonder if i can go to that i could use the blue thing for that i don't know ETC RFC. Let's try typing it in. Oh. R what is it? RTC dot? No, I can't remember a whole... More than about three or four letters and numbers at a time. I've been that way pretty much my whole life. Oh, RFC dot... One nine one two. I'll try that. One nine one two dot zone. Since zones is the word. Dot one nine one two dot z o n e s. I'm not gonna hit enter yet because I might have got those numbers backwards. One nine one two zones. Okay. Okay, that's empty. Okay, but I made my own zone file, so that might be. Well, why would it be there and be empty? Maybe it was a default file, but my zone files are, and they said you can name them whatever you want. Okay, so mine is. Oh, let's try this. Nah, be better to just go through uh, Midnight Commander <clears throat> and look for my zone files. And then reverse zones. Okay, let's go open up Midnight Commander and look for my zone files. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's my server. Uh, so this is my website. On this side, I will go to ETC. And then what was it? Let's, let's kind of backtrack here. Okay. Well, I've already saw the hosts. <coughs> ETC hosts. Let's do it again. ETC hosts. Oh, yeah. This is the one that has a jillion. Files in it. Hosts. Host allow. Host name. Oh, really? Let's look at hosts. Let's see. You can't just. Yeah, you can't just hit enter to view it like you can in Crusader. I have to go. Oh. So if I hit F3, would that let me view it? View, edit, copy, rename, move, make, direct. Just make sure. Well, I'm using those F. Yeah, that'll let me view it. <clears throat> okay, so those are oh, I was in there a minute ago. Local host, local domain. Okay, now let's see what the host name file is. F3 strip headers from current news. Do something on the current file. Edit, call. Copy file. Okay, so it brought up another menu, but double double escape gets you out of there. I don't know. <coughs> Host config. You see host config multi on. That's it. 
It's easy to use once you kind of start getting the hang of it. <clears throat> okay, and um, ET Resolve Con. Resolve conflict. Okay, bishop code out us dot two and bishop code out local domain. Name server. Oh right, right, right. Now I think there's some wrong things in there. I'm gonna screenshot that. <clears throat> I think I should change that to bit for right now. I should put in uh, bishop code out biz while I'm you know trying to make bishop code out biz work. And uh, name server should be, I think it should be this, the IP address of this machine. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'm still scared to just mess with the files when I'm not real sure about what I'm doing. I was in what? Resolve config now. Named config now. I know I've been in there a few, quite a few times. Named config. Now there's there's that RFC nineteen ninety five zone zones, but that's empty. Named config, and that one I've went over. Well, it's got allow query, yeah, from my router, so that should be. Seems to me that would be right. And then, oh yeah, my bishop code up biz zone master. All that seems right. This one is the one I was just in. Oh, that one's not empty. Must have typed it in wrong a while ago. Oh, localhost dot local domain localhost, but it doesn't have. Anything else doesn't have bishop code out bills or anything else in there. Just local host. <clears throat> this is the one I think. This is the one that uh, 1912 zones. Yeah, right up there. Named RFC nineteen twelve zone. So this is a file that's in in every one of the servers. This is not one of those. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's there, but do I do I edit it? Okay. I will have to take this one step at a time. I think what I'm going to have to do, <clears throat> if I do need to make any changes, I'm either going to find it in writing, or I'm going to have to, uh, and I can do it in the video, or I'll have to. Watch the video, pause it and do what it says, pause it and do what it says. That'll, I think I'll start looking for some written out instructions there. But I found plenty, I found enough of them. I mean, I, the ones that I thought were really good, I put in my bookmarks and the rest I didn't. But there's variations, there's so many variations in how you do it. Configure forwarding and reverse zone. So it looks like most all these configuration files are in the ETC folder. So let's just look through the ETC folder and see if there's anything else. That, there's an awful lot of files in there, but that I know it'll have to do with the server. See, everything's in there. The Chrome tabs, Anachrone, all that stuff. Crash log, see? Oh, CSH logging. I thought this said crash. <coughs> Dracoot config, I remember Dracoot, but I forgot what it does. There's a lot of things you could completely break the system in here. Host config, host name. Like I was looking at host name and it was something different. Hosts, hosts allow. Oh yeah, I looked at that. This contains access rules to allow and deny access to network services. It's 
and it's not set up in any way so <clears throat> but i don't i don't think I, that's not something i didn't i didn't see that you had to change for the server to work right locale i guess that's like your oh I hit f3 again by accident i figured jump yeah, U.S. English U2FA. <coughs> oh, I've been getting hungry for a while, so it won't be too long. I'm gonna wanna just quit. Getting tired, I probably just wanna quit. Period. When I do get to that. to FS that's not related thought that might be the one where it tells it how often to uh, <coughs> run your your file system okay. Okay. file system check that's something else Name ch root file. So that's named. Okay. Oh, that gives you like a list of the files. Name config. Isn't that the one I've been in a bunch of times already or not? Oh, no. I haven't been in it. But I do have zone bishop code out biz. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I think that is the one I've been in. Right. Okay. Recursion, yes, yeah. That's the one I probably want to change. And then I know I just was in there. This one doesn't have, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I need something else in there. Named root key. No, I don't think that one is something I need to go in. Or is it? Oh, yeah. config nfs config password resolve that was one of the ones that's the one i think i probably need to change it says generated by network manager though so whatever, it's probably another file. Oh, yeah, that's the one that's supposed to be changed by another file, and I think I didn't even have it or couldn't find it or something. <clears throat> and that video that showed, you know, the guy showed you, now don't edit this one, edit the other one. Webalizer. I was wondering what Webalizer is. I mean, it does. It sounds familiar. Wondering if it was a configuration tool or a <coughs> like a more of a log reader. Or I'm really getting. I'm trying to just go through it fast. Very long config file. Ellie graph. I think it might be a, more of a statistics app for your website or something. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I think it might be a statistics thing to tell what your website is doing. Okay, well, I'm wasting time. <coughs> I'm getting down to the end of all the files. Yep. Okay. <coughs> so, that's everything in ETC. I think there was some stuff in a different folder. Yeah, there was that other folder. And that one. Uh, something that was. I don't remember now what what the name of the folder was. DHCP, I think. There we go. Yeah, oh yeah. And they that file wasn't in there. And but there's this DH client D folder which has the crony deal in it. That file he was telling you that it's not there. And I kept, I went around and around forever trying to make sure I had that figured out. Right there is where, I don't think it matters right now. So. Okay, so, uh, okay, so it seems like, That I never did see change those those var named forward zone. Well, let's go look. Yeah, var named var. Oh, var named. Okay, we're already on var over here on the other side. So var named. I changed the layout on this side, but not on that side. Or well, it might have went away when I closed it. I don't know, but. I don't really see any difference. It, this one's maybe it didn't do just the left side. Maybe it ended up doing both sides. But everything's uh, in alphabetical order. Oh, look there. There's one of my zone files right there. <coughs> so uh, var name forward and var name reverse, but I don't see forward and reverse. But I see. I do not see either one, but I have Bishop Codot Viz zone. And I made this one <clears throat> with those commands. So now that has the right IP in it. Bishop Codot Viz, root Bishop Codot Viz. The only thing I don't know is about is the. Uh, ah, IN NS server, name server. Ah. Oh. That's all good. I'm almost certain that's all good. <coughs> now, I would make one of those files for every domain name is what I understood. But, I mean, that has to be pointed to from, well, you you make it by some of those cat commands or something, something fancy, and it makes it for you. <coughs> but then you have to put the right stuff in there like that. But Okay, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I don't have any of the other stuff. I don't have the forward and reverse stuff. <coughs> so, yeah, I don't think I got everything done that I need done. I'll set the group permissions. Yeah, and he forgot what he, how he said to do it. You can do it in the command line, but what I was wondering, let's just see if that could be done. We can't right click. <clears throat> um, so F9, file permission, maybe CH own, probably. CXO. Ah, yes. Root, root. So the group, <clears throat> they told you how to. Uh, I'm going to screenshot that. They told you how to set the permissions. I don't remember what they needed to be. Now. Whoops. It's changing when I do that. I guess I have to do it that way. 
Oh, I thought, uh, oh, I see. Bishop fell on her name. Mm -hmm. So and so, so and so. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't know what, I don't know what they were saying it needed to be. Whoops. It's easy to mess it up. You needed to change the group to something. Make sure it was in the right group. Now I'm messing up. Okay, root. Okay, cancel. <clears throat> but I can do it with that. That's easier than... I'm always afraid to change permissions with commands because you can mess it up. So I tried it before and you can mess it up so easy. Name.ca. That's one that I think I edited. Two servers found. Answer section. That was already there, and I think I just edited it. Well, no, I didn't. Certainly, I didn't. Server one nine eight dot forty one dot zero. Huh. I don't know, but I just remember the file. Root servers dot net. This looks like something you wouldn't want to mess with. That looks like it's. Uh, the you know authoritative stuff that you don't want you probably wouldn't want to change that named empty okay named empty named local host okay loop back all slaves nothing dynamic Oh, data, CA troops, oh, oh. Okay, I don't know what all that is. <coughs> Why it's there. But, uh, yeah, I decided that one should be right. I think. I think so. But there is one that I think is wrong. And that's ETC. Uh, one of those server files. <coughs> I mean, setup files. I've already forgot now. Programming is not in. Let's try going to the. Day, today during the up well let's turn it i think this one just needs to be done the other way click it again it should put that on the top there we go it will go ahead and go where i want it to go it opened it up in another another window of the program looks like yep <coughs> No, it didn't work the way I wanted it. I was going in the wrong order. It's not showing them in the right order. Those are old ones. They're supposed to be. Oh, yeah, because those are in my screenshots folder. They're not. <coughs> They're not in that folder. I didn't move them over there. I guess I will be wanting to do that. But I have mates the one that opens up quick. Okay, yeah. What I just looked at. Uh, oh, can I monitor it? Well, I guess I didn't screenshot it because I... You know, 
didn't think about it. <clears throat> but the one that I'm, I thought I screenshotted the one that I was thinking I needed to edit. I guess I didn't. Wait, there it is. Yeah, that one. That is... Oh, there it is right there. Resolve config. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, resolve config is the one I think I probably need to edit. <coughs> but I'm going to hang on... Until I'm more sure about it. Okay, so. This one here. Yeah, you can't edit it in this. I'd have to open it with Nano, I guess. There might be a way in this program, but it's not doing it when I just hit... This is just a viewer, but uh, that should say, for right now, while I'm doing bishopco.biz, it should say search bishopco.biz, and then uh, bishopco.local domain, that's good, and uh, name server, that should be this machine. I just don't see how it could possibly be the router. Makes no sense. But I want to make sure this is not one of those automatically edited files. Well, I think it's one you manually edit. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, there's only two things I can do. Let's see. Well, I, don't, I never did see a file that had the thing I keep seeing them do uh, in some of these videos. And that's where they, it, there's a spot where I think it might be in the, I don't know where it is. And I got to figure that out. Somewhere in there. You uh, put your ns1 dot, well, it's going to use, you know, usually it's going to be your, uh, unless you're a big thing like GoDaddy and they have their very own, you know, separate names. Well, they, ha they have lots, you know, name servers. Well, this is my name server, so it's going to be bishopco. Dot, for, right, for now, it'll be bishopco. Dot biz. ns1 dot bishopco. Dot biz is what I'll make it. And I don't think I ever did that. Unless editing that file right would make it happen. But, uh, yeah, going to, uh, I don't want to show that until I get in the right spot. <clears throat> So, yeah, I've already manually put in my, uh, see, the only A name record, well, it has two. It has my, where I manually put in my my public IP and then my, the living beings uh, subdomain, which is forwarded, that I forgot I even had it. <clears throat> and then there's the name servers I could change to, you know, this one up, bishop code up, biz, or I could just say forward. Um, I could say forward, let's see, oh, I'll just, just tell about it, <clears throat> I, I don't, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure, you can do forward, you, get, you give a, you can either do HTTP or HTTPS, oh, okay, so I guess I could do both if I wanted to. And uh, I actually was thinking, well, I could. Uh, okay, in that case, I could do the HTTPS to what's in my router without even taking the other one offline. Well, no, because this forward is going to take over the whole domain name. Yeah, so I could do that. But anyway, forward and then it's permanent or temporary. 
forward only or forward with masking. And then there's a box that says update my name, servers, and DNS settings to support this change. So I would click that box. And that's how I've always done my forwarding, and it works. As long as you hit it right, you know, it works pretty easily. <coughs> Add premium DNS. What is that? Create an unbreakable chain that stops hackers from hijacking your website. Secondary DNS, protect your website's uptime, vulnerabilities, so on, so on, so on. So, of course, that's a monthly fee for that. Templates, export zone file from Linux. Export a zone file for Unix. Okay. Import. What if I click on export a zone file? Huh. I'm going to save that file and see what it looks like. What? OBS Studio. Oh, no. So I completely lost my connection there for a minute. <clears throat> and it looks like I'm back up again. So maybe it's time for me to quit anyway, huh? Um, thought I was dead in the water for a minute there, but I saw, well, my OBS Studio, I've never seen it do that before. It said OBS Studio disconnecting, I think, you know, my streaming app that I'm using, program that I'm using. And then it said... Uh, reconnecting and I looked over there at my preview it just happened evidently looked over there at my preview and it said uh, anyway it was down and then it came but then it came back up so uh, oh I'm trying to check my sound I can see the picture but I can't hear the yeah there we go it once uh, I had to reload the preview because it wasn't working okay so um, well, that's what I was showing and everything. And I clicked on that export zone file for Linux. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. Hit cancel on that. Close that so I don't mess it up again. So I saved it to my, and that's a screenshot that I'm looking at. Okay. Oops. zone file I don't know what's going to be in the zone file so again I'm going to make it blurry so that when I open it it won't okay Oh, okay, it's got their uh, <clears throat> their information in it. It's saying this is, well, I'm not going to go over it. But you can use it, but oh, kind of use it at your own risk, and we don't support it, and so on and so on. But it's going to their name servers and everything. The one thing is, you know, I suppose might help you in, it's a zone file. I can kind of tell that, <clears throat> but it might help you, like, just change their name, NS11, you know, direct domain control to yours it says bishop code op biz that's the one i downloaded yeah c name records and yeah all that stuff i n c name oh it's got everything email ftp imap everything of course i could comment all those out that i don't want to use this is the whole thing the way they you you know their zone file of course codex zone file that does it's perfectly laid out. I mean, wouldn't be any mistakes in it. It would all work. But I think instead of using the number sign for a comment, they're using a semicolon. I'm, I've forgotten about that. I, that's two. Th I've seen two forward slashes in a row. Now most people use for comment things out. They use number signs, and you always know that's a comment. And even in editors, it will turn. Usually, the, the editors that have that feature or text editors. It'll change the color, you know, and it makes it easy to see the comment. But it looks like the, they're using a semicolon for theirs. 
unless that's part of the syntax. I don't think so because it starts out with semicolon on every line and it's all comments. Use it at your own risk. But yeah, it could help you to build a zone file, I think. But it's got way too many services in there that I don't need, that's for sure. Email and everything else. Pop SMTP, web, everything. And I, I kind of be hard to tell what to take out and what to keep. But I do think I will... Uh, Put it in my Don my Don's websites folder. I better rename it. <clears throat> Just says Bishop Code Up is. Go daddy don't zone file. We'll just leave it like that. Okay, move you. All right, now. <clears throat> well, I don't know why my stream broke and then came back. I have no clue, but uh, let's see what was I doing when all that happened. But I do have a backup video, but I think it's just going to lose like a minute or you know thirty seconds of it, and it won't matter. <clears throat> but um, resolve config. That one I think I ought to edit, but I'm I think I'm too tired now to mess with it anymore. And and since my stream's acting up anyway, and I'm starving. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do F10. Get out of there. Oh, I'm still on the picture mode instead of the desktop mode. So, <clears throat> um, that's the only thing I see. Well, there's a couple of things I see. Like, I don't, I see that I don't have, um, uh, now I went blank. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I have all the files I need to make it work. From what I gather from the different videos I've watched. And, uh, like, if I go, I don't think I have any more. Like I said. I don't think I, see, mostly what all I've got that I've been looking at is videos. <clears throat> on this, because I really needed, I just felt like that's what I needed in order to get a handle on it. And uh, okay, I already tried to find something about doing a static IP in here, and I didn't see anything. There's probably more pages besides that, though. <coughs> statistics this is more of like the how it all works than um, and all the commands than it is about this is not saying this is instructions on installing you know and setting up this is trying to really teach you to understand it but it's also very oh yeah there's a next page very very involved Comment tags. It's telling you the theory so that you can, you know, you learn all this and then you sit down and do it. <laughs> Which, of course, is just like, well, a college course, <laughs> you know. Var name, var slaves, var dynamic. There have been a few times over the years when I have read through this junk for a day or two. And it did help, but again, by the time I got done, I had for, I just couldn't retain it all. Got a really good memory, then maybe that'd be a way to go. You know, I mean, obviously a lot of people do because they're the ones making the videos, like I've been watching. And of course, they're doing it for a living. They're doing it all day, every day. And once they learn it, they 
the more you do it, the more you remember it. Everybody's that way, I think. I am. So, yeah, I went to the next page and just began to email ser name servers and stuff. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> One of the first things in all the videos is how to set a static IP. So if I just stop and pay attention to that, I can do it. Oh, OBS is dang it, going down again. Why is it doing that? Reconnection successful. Okay. Uh... It went down again, so there's no point in keeping on trying to make a video. And I'm tired, like I've been saying. So I guess this is a, a hint, hint, quit. It's time to stop. So uh, <clears throat> I don't even know. I, I keep thinking there's just one more thing I want to check before I quit, you know, but heck, I don't even know what it is anymore. So um, all I did today was just check and recheck and check and recheck. I really thought I was going to. I thought I'd just kind of go through those screenshots and then and then try it on you know try to put it online again, but I didn't I didn't change anything yet in GoDaddy or anything. I just it's still I didn't even get to the point of trying it because I just can't wrap my head around all all the config files that are needed and what's needed in each one. The more I study, the the more I get find more options, so it just makes it <laughs> more confusing. It's, it's, it's less confusing to me, actually. I'm getting to understand the basics of it. Again, I, like I said, years ago, I did study up on it quite a bit. But uh, <clears throat> what exactly needs to go in what config file and everything, I don't know. I need to. So I know I look. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I look for that, that application that that's in one of the videos that GUI that I showed a few screenshots of. That is not available in Fedora 28. I think that would make it easy even if it was. But uh, the one for Apache, I doubt it is either, but if it was, uh, that's not what I'm trying to do right now anyway. Apache is fine right now. Everything is the way it needs to be. So I guess I'm going to go before it quits on me again and eat and all that junk. It's 2.11 a.m. anyway. I wonder I'm tired. <clears throat> okay, well, the, they never said it would be easy. So <laughs> they all said it's, it's, they said your first first one to set and the first one up can be pretty daunting. Every, well, several of the videos said that, and it is. And I knew that because that's why I had never gone back and, and finished doing it. I started trying to do it and then got tired of messing with it. Decided to just keep using forwarding, you know. So, Anyway, but I just felt that right now, I felt like, oh, I'm so close. I mean, it is up and running without errors. But, uh, and I, I uh, I just don't know if it can actually talk to the internet and say, hey, here I am. You know, well, it may be able to do, from what it looked like to me, well, that, I think I fooled myself. What it looked like to me is it couldn't do it on the local network, but it could do it on the internet, but now I don't think so. Well, I, sh I guess I can, just, like I said, I can put it on the internet again and see. Let's see. I had ideas before I started. Well, I could change the name servers to, well, I got, yeah. I never found the file that said, you know, my, I don't think I ever put NS, made my ns1.bishopco.biz. I got to find that file. I don't think I've ever made it. So I think I didn't get to that part. And the instructions I followed, I don't think they showed you how to do that <coughs> so uh, I guess because we were really about doing a local one local name server that and that thing I saw at the beginning there the one that I've installed here on you know in Fedora automatically here it's that one of those messages in one of those config files said it's only a local name server so it may not have I think maybe it, it's all there but I just it, the config files I'd had to manually set them all up from kind of guessing from the videos the way that they were showing you know so yeah I'm back in circles again so anyway I'm gonna go and uh, yeah the, the videos are really helpful but I don't think I'll get it done without some 
written out instructions to follow. This is just one of those things that are like that for me. All right. Be back when, when I'm back. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.